Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It is Dragon's Greed Gaming coming at you pseudo live. Thank you for joining us again as we are delving back into the dying doom metal world of Merkbor. And we are here for episode six of the Blighted Bulk Work. But as always, before we dive in, be sure you stop by our Facebook page. Follow us there to get all the latest news for the channel and our shows and everything that we're up to. Stop by iTunes and Apple Podcast. Leave us a five-star rating or five-star review to help us grow the channel even more. And uh, check us out over on YouTube. We just recorded another episode of Tale of Four Gamers today. A lot of good progress. And we're going to be having a 40k tale of gamer starting up in July. If it's not already July by the time you hear this, uh, so we're going to have some new faces, some old faces. We're going to ride that hype train for 10th edition Warhammer 40,000. So, if you want to see some cool models, hang out, talk with us, and uh, see us as we dive into another hobby journey, we invite you along the way. And of course, as always, if you are feeling spunky, if you want to help support the channel even more, consider joining our Patreon, where we have a monthly Patreon-only actual play series of Warhammer Fantasy, which is about to wrap up. We're recording the last episode of our first campaign called Tales from the Old World. We're actually going to be recording that at the end of June here in a couple weeks. And then we're going to have a new game starting off the next month, which at the airtime is probably that going to be either August or September. I'd have to double check, but um, there will be no breaks. So uh, if you join in, you get access to all the old episodes, plus any of the new stuff each month. We got artwork from Kyle. We got uh, access to our Discord, early access to all of our episodes. So if you like Warhammer, which I know a lot of our listeners do, check it out. We're going to be stepping into the shoes of an elven party and checking out uh well i don't want to spoil too much because i'm still working on a few things but it will be an all elf party so we'll see what happens with that uh anyway uh i am your host the great unclean one as always behind the gm screen and i am joined by the usual cast of characters except we do not have our champion our chosen one Henry, played by the frog, will not be here tonight. He's got, uh, I think, family stuff or something. I don't know. It's not a good excuse, whatever it is. Um, but we are joined once again by everyone's favorite Telian. Tyler has returned. He was just going to sit in and listen, but luckily Mirthbor is so easy to kill your friend's characters with that I said, we'll just give you a character and you can help play. So welcome back, buddy. Dude, I am so pumped to play this game. This uh, this and Blade Runner were the two that I was super excited to uh, either listen to or be a part of. So thanks for having me tonight. Well, you will not be disappointed because this game has basically turned out to be everything that it's been promised. So it's been quite a quite a fucking ride here. So um, who are you playing tonight, Tyler? Tell us about your character a little bit and uh, anything else you want to tell the listeners that you've been up to or anything like that. Ooh, uh, so I am uh, playing Dorpat, who is an esoteric hermit. And I have four hit points, which I'm told is quite a lot. Um, but uh, beyond that, I don't know uh, much more about the uh, character. I mean, it's it's a lot in the sense that you could start with one HP, <laughs> but it's not a lot in the sense that some monsters do D6 damage. So, oh. you know, you could still die in one hit. Um, but if that happens, you see that little skull button next to, uh, your class, just to the right of your class? Yeah. If you hit that, that'll generate a brand new character for you in one click of a button. Dude, that's insane. Yeah, I'm reading the query here, and, like, they, uh, <laughs> it's very tick the description. Vindictive and unreliable, bit off tongue, you pick your nose so deep it bleeds. Jesus. Ooh, damn. <laughs> That is a rock. I, I guess I, I I'll have to incorporate that uh, picking my nose into the role playing. Yeah, so that that's like uh, when you make a character in this game, um, you basically roll a couple background things that kind of make your little mini backstory, 
and like uh, so that Eldritch Origins, there's probably six different ones you can roll, and those will determine like some of your starting equipment or starting powers, along with like your basically your origin story, so to speak. That um, is so yeah, the Esoteric Hermic is kind of like a uh, you know a weird spell caster dude. So, ah, huh, so do uh, I have to uh, role play my bit off tongue? Can I not talk? Um, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, <laughs> Probably won't be make pretty a funny. Role playing, so yeah, I don't know. But. It's pretty funny, uh, Chris. I will <laughs> say, as far as projects I've been working on, you'll be very upset to know I did buy the new uh, Lizardmen box set that came out. So <laughs> I, am, I am starting a new Lizardmen army to, you know, be oh, a be a be a thorn in your side into uh, the I, 2020s here. But I wouldn't have it any other way. It's been that way for <laughs> 30 something years. So. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you've been playing Lizardmen since day one, so I can... Yeah, you know, my original army, but uh, yeah, very excited for Old World. God, I'm surrounded by lizard people. You and Eric. Ugh. <laughs> God, can't get away from them. You know, at, least there's no, at least there's no dwarves here. It's like you can't get away from blowpipes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, fighting Lizardmen or fighting dwarves in Warhammer Fantasy. They're both so awful and unfun. I always dwarves. hated dwarves more. Yep. I would probably say dwarves just because, like, I think with lizard men, if you took like a, a balanced army, it's not it's not too out of control. Like, you kind of have to go out of your way to be a total douchebag with lizard men. Right. But with dwarves, it's just like, oh, I play dwarves, so yeah. There's a ninety percent chance you're not going to have fun. Right. Yeah. It's like, well, my basic units are all leadership nine. Everything's stubborn. Everything gets rerolls on their leadership. Everything's immune to panic. Everybody's like weapon skill five. Oh, my war machines kick ass. Oh, and you don't get to play the magic phase because fuck you. Like, oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but if you're one of those filthy people who runs a four Stegadon list, you need to take a long, hard look in the mirror and you need to ask yourself what went wrong with your life. Apparently right. nothing, because they're running four Stegodons and having the best of times. Oh, no. Yeah, until I kill one over yeah. six turns with my one cannon that I brought. Yeah. And they start bitching like a little, like a little bitch. Yeah. No, <laughs> thanks. Been there, done that. Anywho, uh, speaking of lizard men, I guess we can switch it on over to Eric, our other uh, resident cold-blooded 3D6 pick the lowest leadership test guy. Hi, good evening. I am Eric. I am playing Rawl. Rawl. The sacrilegious songbird this uh, this week. Rawlsk. Uh, Rawlsk. <laughs> we'll see when he gets uh, gets to join the party. Okay. Wonderful. I don't think we've had a songbird yet, have we? Uh, I thought somebody started as a songbird. Yeah, it was a songbird, and I died immediately. Oh, that's right, because you had the hurty gertie. Yeah. 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 One one crank of the hurdy gurdy and then I was uh <laughs> unceremoniously deadened. Out of commission. Okay. All right, well we can learn more about Grolsk later. Uh Kyle, how about you? I think you're bringing in a new character too, aren't you? Oh, you bet. Uh I got swallowed uh in one bite. Uh but I mean that's what I get for turning into a raven, but I never said the guy was smart. Oh, that's right. The <laughs> um, worm. The fucking gut yep. worm killed you. But gut you worm just swallowed the right. shit out of me. <laughs> yes, you did. You avenged me, so thank you. <laughs> we did our best. Um, yeah. <laughs> I will be playing uh, Drackle. Uh, he is a dead god's prophet. Uh, his stats are abysmal. His okay. HP his HP is one. <laughs> oh no. Um, but kill, kill he does have. He does have a very interesting thing where in if he dies, I make a D14 presence test, and if I pass, my god refuses me in the afterlife and kicks me back out. Okay. With, with one HP. So. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Yeah, so this will be fucking interesting. Alright. And how many, how many miseries have we had so far? It's been three or four? four. We're at four. four I, yeah, we're Damn. at four, right? Ooh. World's We're coming there. to an end. All right. Literally, yeah. That's how the game works, right? Well, alas, uh, we left. That's everybody, right? No, Sean, you need to talk. You're still alive, I think. Yeah, right? I am still alive. 
Uh, I am playing Rilk, the Pale One, 10 HP. It's feeling good. Um, he can cast a spell a day, I think. I think that's his power. Yep, yep. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, he has digit, digitigrade limbs. Digitigrade limbs, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Uh, I guess he can just like dislocate his joints and fit through tiny spaces. Oh. Digitigrade limbs. Yeah. Digitigrade limbs, yeah. Uh, okay. Tests involving flexibility are at minus four DR. Cool. All right, I'm going to try to put your character down so it doesn't get too powerful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got God Mode Henry over here. I know, yeah. You survive two missions and get that chaos play, you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, alas, we left. Well, I'm the great and clean one. You all know that. I'm the host. I'm your GM. Uh, got some great work done on my Chaos Army for Tales of the... Uh, not Tales. Tale of Four Gamers. So check that out over on YouTube. Uh, Endgame Crisis has started in my Total War campaign playing as uh, Clan Mulder, Skaven. The Wood Elves have emerged and... Uh, it's outright chaos, man. There are I'm being attacked from all sides. Uh, I'm still bros with uh, Azazel, Demon Prince of Slanesh, um, but uh, he's been having with the Empire, who declared war on me and showed up with like ten armies. So I had to slap down Carl Franz and put him in his place. But it's gotten to the point now where every time I fight somebody, then someone else is sneaking through the other part of my kingdom where none of my armies are. Uh, Archeon showed up and tried to uh, siege my capital city. And, oh man, what a great defense. My fucking shitty garrison held out the day and tore up Archeon's army. And he ran away after the battle because I fucked his army up so much. Um, he won the battle. He fucked up the city. But his army immediately left my territory after that and ran away. Um, Skaven Towers. Ooh, so good. Mwah. Beautiful. Other than that, uh, yeah, just busy with all the usual stuff, so not really a whole lot else to say there. Uh, but alas, we left. The group had been asked by a woman in the town whose child had gone missing. A woman by the name of Borda said her son, Thurg, had been kidnapped by the cannibal warlock Fletcher and taken to his lair, the Accursed Den. And uh, you guys agreed to go find Thurg and save him before he is eaten by cannibals. And you've explored a lot of the Accursed Den so far. You've fought and killed Fletcher and the horrible creature, the uh, gut worm in the, uh, the black pit of sludge. And uh, unfortunately, though, only Rilk and Henry are still alive. Your two companions have fallen. Uh, Spiker and Pell uh, are both dead and or eaten. And we left where you guys had basically explored the last path you could find, crawling through a small tunnel and finding your way into a, uh, like a greenhouse, complete with a glass... Uh, roof where you can actually see the uh, the stars outside of, of night. And inside, you encountered a woman along with three young men who are sitting down to have a meal at a campfire. And they've invited you to join them uh, for such a meal. And I don't know if I described the woman last week, Sean, so that is where we will start off. Uh, she has long, dark hair, and she is basically dressed in what looks like a burlap sack with the holes cut out to make armholes. Um, and she has, uh, like, weird runes or tattoos or, or facial paint on her on her face. Um, otherwise, she's rather unremarkable. And then the three uh, the three men that are here are young men in like their probably early 20s, uh, pretty much just dressed in rags, kind of like she is. And they're all sitting around this campfire. And I think that is where we will begin. I'm trying to find the artwork for uh, this woman here to show you, but I have too many folders. Here we go. There you go. 
Cool. And, uh, yeah, so it's the first thing you've encountered that has to try to kill you immediately, so that is where we will begin. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna look to Henry like, should we sit down and eat? We're still gonna find that kid. Uh, he says, well, maybe they know where the kid is, maybe they can help us out. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, okay. I guess I'll go sit down somewhere. Like with okay. my back against the wall, so. Yeah, he joined. Henry will stick with you, obviously. Yeah. I guess we're just over here. I'll tell you what, I'll put everybody else's tokens uh, in here just so you guys can see the room while we play, so you're not left in the literal dark. Uh, so there's Pell. Real... Oh, wait, no, Rook's already here. What am I doing? Okay, well, you sit down. Um, what do you say to them? What do you do? Uh, hi. We're, um, looking for a missing child. Any of you seen a small lad named Thurg? Give me a BR-10 presence test, please. Okay. Sixteen. She says, uh, yes, I, I know of the lad you speak of. He was brought here not too long ago by Fletcher and his men. Right. Uh, well, we looked all around. We couldn't really find him. Open not sure where he may have been kept. Uh, I don't know if they've slaughtered the boy, but... We haven't heard much. Fletcher doesn't, uh... Well, he can't get to us through the tunnel. He doesn't fit. He's too big. So, he's tried to get us out before, but he doesn't really have a way to, so... We stay here and, uh... Keep to ourselves and try to avoid him when we can. Yeah, who are you all, I guess? She says, my name is Lesdy. And these are my posts. Did she say hosts? She did. Okay. <laughs> uh, does Rilk have any idea what that word might mean, or? Nope. Cool. No idea. All right. Uh, so he's just gonna ask, "What do you mean by hosts? Do they own this place, or?" She just uh. She just smiles. And at this point, you can see that um, one of them is starting to fill their bowls with the, the soup they've been cooking on their campfire, and they begin to, like, hand that around and fill them up, and then they, they fill up two extra bowls for you and Henry. So what are we eating? She says, so just a stew that we've put together. Don't worry, there's no people parts in there. We're not like Fletcher and his maniacs. I incite that. Sure. <laughs> or yeah. or how we read presents, I guess. Uh, presents. Incite. Yep, ten. Alright. Another sixteen. Doesn't seem like she's lying to you. Okay. It does smell quite good. Okay. And you see that all of them begin to to eat it, and she says, so you're here trying to find the boy? Yep. Yep. We we met Fletcher. He, uh, he is dead. You see a surprised look come across her face. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, then we can, uh, we can come and go as we please without problems. What about yeah. his guards? Are they still here? Uh, I think most of them are dead. I don't think yeah, you we killed. You killed all but the one that you let go. Yeah, the one that they're... had the key. <laughs> yeah. Do we know what uh, door that went to? Was that like the door up here? We think. Um. No, that door was locked from the inside. Mm -hmm. Uh oh no, it was. You think it's for this room here? Because remember, gotcha. there's a door here, and there was a door here, like the big iron doors. Right. Um, and you haven't been able to open those. Okay. Yeah. 
so I... <laughs> Fuck, that's probably where the kid is. Okay. Right, yeah, so most of them are dead. I think one of them ran away, so that guy might come back. Big Worm's dead, too. She looks even more surprised. You've slain the gut worm. Yeah, well, I mean, two of our friends died, but, you know. Hmm. It's dead, too, so. And he'll just kind of, like, look up at the night sky. Was it night when we came in here? Um, it was getting dark, okay. so you've been in here for a little while. Yeah, it makes sense. Gotcha, okay. Well, uh... Yes, Henry, we should probably go try to find the Thurg before anything bad happens to him. Or he starves to death. I don't know. Uh, are you joining them for dinner, or are you leaving? Uh, I'm gonna leave. She comments on that. She says, you're not going to stay and eat with us. Um, no, because if, if I get back real late, the boss of our guard is gonna beat the shit out of me, especially if I took time out of my day to not save that kid. I'm already in pretty hot water as it is. Hmm. That's too bad. And she's staring at you with this blank, strange expression. Okay. Uh, well, good luck. <laughs> and I'm gonna start making my way towards the door, or the path. You see that the three men put their bowls down and stand up as you begin to walk away. Cool. Cool. Really like that. Gonna look at Henry like, what's the play here, boss? Each of them draws a knife. Yeah, cool. I've got Fletcher's flail out now. <laughs> and I'm just gonna swing at one of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, initiative, please. So, Tyler, in this game, initiative is very simple. You roll a d6. Uh, on a one, two, or three, the enemies go first. On a four, five, or six, yep. the players go first. Um, if somebody would like to control Henry, please, I'll give you guys access to his character sheet, and you can fight over who's going to get him killed, because I will not be held responsible for that. That it. There you go. I guess it's Eric, then. Uh, okay, uh, well, um, they come charging in uh, to obviously kill you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, let's see, there's, oh, what are these guys? Okay. We'll have two attack Henry. Well, actually, two attack you, one will attack Henry, since you're the one who, like, left and was doing the talking. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, go ahead and make your defensive rolls. These guys are DR12. They do D6 damage with their very, oh. very long knives. Jeez, Okay. And you can see as they charge towards you, they kind of have this frenzied look in their eyes. Oh, and of course, we got to change the music. I took one damage. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. One so what do we got here? Henry takes a damage. Rilk takes a damage. I got to do another uh, one. Oh, you got to defend the second one. Nice. Oh, I take four more damage. <laughs> uh, I've got. Hold on, I've got. Do we get our omens back at the start of the game? Start of the session, or no? Um, I thought omens were per day. Yeah, like they in might game be per day. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that sucks. Um. <laughs> well, yeah. So uh, I just take four more damage from that big rip. Cool. Okay. Um. So our turn. Yeah. Uh. All Les Lesdy does is she just kind of steps back behind these guys, so that, you know, they're kind of in between you and her. Cool. Cool. I guess we start just start stabbing dudes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess we're just gonna we're gonna go hard. Uh. I will attack the one of the ones in front of me. Okay. Go for it. 
Uh, do they have any armor? They do not. Okay. Uh, they're just wearing rags. And DR-12? Yep. Cool, cool. Seven damage. Oh my god. Sean, you crushed the first one's skull in one fell swoop. Look. Oh god, Henry with the chaos blade. <laughs> 13 damage, you cleave the other oh, one in half. Know. Blood everywhere. Uh, next round, wow. this one is going to attack. Hi, it'll be Sean. Hello, it's attacking Henry. And at this point, you see that Lesdi goes running for the tunnel. Oh, what a piece of shit. <laughs> All right, Henry, defensive roll. Ooh, three Ouch. damage. Nice. Rough. Kill that chosen one. All right, Eric, I think, uh, do we want to let her leave or? Uh, if you got the guy, I can chase after her. I'll try, yeah. I'll try to kill the guy. Oh, nope, no, I won't. critical failure! <laughs> oh my gosh. Your weapon breaks or is lost. That's so upsetting. Uh, oh, that's got Fletcher's no flail, isn't it? Yeah. I just got that. <laughs> <laughs> do well, no uh, so, I do not have any omens left. All right, I can you, have them. Do you have an omen, Henry? I I would love to give him an omen. Your character hasn't been introduced yet. You guys, I'm gonna let you guys, let you guys <laughs> make it that hard. <laughs> Does Henry have any omens left? No. I yeah, didn't think so. We're all tapped out from oh, our fight with the fucking God. worm. All right, so. Uh, Fletcher's flail, you try to wrap it around this guy, and it wraps around his his knife, and he pulls his arm back to try to defend himself, and it goes flying somewhere into the many, many bushes and trees uh, that make up the greenhouse. Okay, I assume I can't find that, so I can just delete it from my character sheet? Uh, I, I mean, not during the fight, at least. No, no, but yeah, okay. So. All right, then I guess I'm going to stab the last guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Oh. Oof. We're, uh, we're not looking too oh. hot here. All right. Seeing Rilk unarmed, the man seems to get even more frenzied, now foaming at the mouth, and he uh -oh. will strike at you again. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I don't want to bite and... you. Yeah, I definitely don't want him to bite me. <laughs> nope. Oh god. Oof. Two more damage. Two. Yeah. <laughs> two HP left. Uh oh. Okay. Well, your guy, you guys are out. You uh, you lose sight of Lesdi as she goes running down the hall. Damn. Around the corner of the tunnel. Uh. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll pull out a battle axe. <laughs> okay. Old trusty. Try this again. Okay. There we go. There it is. Only three damage. He's still standing. He doesn't even seem to really acknowledge the fact that he's been struck. Oh, oh. that'll do it. <laughs> oh. That 20, 16 damage. Eric, how does he die? Eric, I think you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> how, how long is the Chaos Blade? It's it's a it's a great sword. It's a great sword. Yeah. Oh, can I thrust it through his mouth? Sure. <laughs> oh. Yep. Right through the right through the skull. Dude, with sixteen damage, critical hit, you can do whatever you want with the sword. <laughs> <laughs> just raise him up and he explodes. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And just like that, it's over, leaving you in the tranquil uh and nicely smelling greenhouse alone with three dead maniacs. Oh, that was fucking weird. Also, out. <laughs> I'm gonna go look for my flail. Be right back, boss. And I'm gonna kick over like their pot of stew as I walk by. It still smells really good. <laughs> like you. <it>. Uh, <laughs> give me a dr sixteen presence test. 
Nope. <laughs> you do okay. not find it, or perhaps it's been consumed by the trees and bushes in here. You're not sure, but you search for it for quite some time, and you are unable to locate it. All right, I guess we'll just leave. Or maybe we should. How's uh, how's Henry looking? Uh, five out of thirteen. Okay. I mean, yeah, I've got two out of ten, so we might want to like take a chill and rest. Not inside this murdered greenhouse. Yeah, what do you guys do at this point? You feel like you've explored the whole area, uh, other than there's the two doors you haven't been able to open. Yeah. Um, probably we need to check those doors or find a way to like get them open. Well, you guys already tried to pick the lock at one point, and that did not work. I remember someone tried that. You don't have a key, so if you have a different idea... Um, I mean, we can... I don't like remember. A... I think Kyle was the one who tried to pick the lock, if I'm not mistaken. But I think so, and I did not do it. Uh, maybe if we get, like, a, um, a crowbar and try to pop it, or... Do, get, like... do, you, have, do you have a crowbar on you? I don't, but I'm okay. go back and buy one, maybe. Uh, you could certainly do that. Um, I guess we'll just go back to the room and first, like, knock on the door and see if there's anyone inside that can yell. You can still hear that weird scratching noise, but it's it's mm. muted due to the heavy door. Gotcha. Okay. Not a good sign. Yeah, Henry has a graveling hook. I don't know if that'd help. I mean, if we concoct a series of pulleys and levers, maybe... There's nothing to really hook it on, because it's just like, <laughs> it's it's like a solid metal door. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, I guess... guess you could try to hook it on the handle. I'd let you try. It would be a, it'd be a DR-18 strength test to break it open, but uh, if you guys work together, you can make it DR-16. Um, maybe first we'll go into, like, number 14 lock the doors, and then, like, take a brief rest. Uh, it's up to you. Um, actually, I don't even know how resting works in this game. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming it's several hours worth. Oh, so okay. That, um, I'll look it up, but while we do, uh, I'll assume it's going to be at least a few hours, so you guys would probably have to, uh... Yeah, I don't know if you want to do that in the dungeon. Yeah. Well... I guess we'll just go back uh, go back to the city and uh, get some reinforcements <laughs> yeah some reinforcements a crowbar put everyone on the lookout for Lesdy okay so it's uh, rest is catch your breath have a drink restore d4 HP a full night's sleep restores d6 HP without food or drink no HP is restored when resting after two days, a starving PC loses D4 health per day. Okay, so I have a water skin <clears throat> for four uses, so I can... So you can take a break right now and catch your breath to get D4 back, or you guys can go back to town and get a full rest and get equipment and uh, reinforcements. Um, Henry has medicine boxes. Oh. He has six medicine boxes, so it'll stop bleeding and infection and give you D6 HP. And it gives presence plus four use in his... Oh, he has six of them. Well, D6 HP. I'll tell you what, for sake of simplicity and to just get the other players involved, why don't we just say that you guys go back to town for the night? Yeah. Um, obviously, Borda is... Uh, distraught that you don't have her son, but when you tell her that you haven't found him yet, you haven't found any signs of him being murdered, and that the dungeon is pretty much clear, you need equipment to go back. Uh, she calms down a little bit, but obviously she's still anxious. So you guys can rest. So you guys can go ahead and make your rest rolls. And then the next day, uh, Rilk and Henry, we will assume that you get uh, your reinforcements from the barracks so the next morning you uh you get your bros and you have three new companions here to uh to join you 
so we can introduce our characters and then we can uh we can go on from there Ooh, henry did not get well rested oh he got one but he got four omens nice what damn. same Dude. actually <laughs> we are four stacked omens. with omens Pat diggity nice. damn yeah um I think Henry should probably use one of his medicine boxes. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Well, since Henry will be in NPC mode, so we won't waste one on him. Um, okay. You know, I'm not. I won't kill his character when he's not here. I don't do that. Unless they play Lizard Men, then maybe I do that. But you know. <laughs> I think I heard Matt saying like, something like about Lockhart and Lizard Men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that guy. <laughs> Damn, he actually did. Oh boy. <laughs> Hey, you know, that, uh, okay, I only kill players when they're not here if it's the last session. Yeah. And they get, they get crit by a Nova Cannon, which it's yeah. destroyed their ship. Yeah. It's rough. Nova Cannons are no joke. Okay, there are your characters. You guys are not dead anymore. So, yeah, you guys are back in town. Uh, we'll switch it over to our favorite map here of Craven Ford. And, uh, yeah, you guys are at the barracks in the morning, getting our usual gruel breakfast. And why don't our new characters uh, introduce themselves? My god, this map is fantastic. Yeah, man, that's <laughs> my sweet artwork. That really? Artwork. Yeah, I drew all uh, that. I tried to make it as gross as possible. No, this fucking kicks ass. <laughs> Thank this, you. Is, this is the coolest map I've ever seen. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I, you meet, uh, I guess, so I come out of the barracks? Yeah, so um, all of you are on rotation right now as one of the guards. You're part of the Blighted Bulwark. And um, at this point, Henry, old man, old crab Henry Wright, uh, that's Matt's character, he has kind of become the legend, the hero of the town as he's gone on three successful missions and come back every time. Uh, I think twice he was the only survivor as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's been granted the use of this massive greatsword called the Chaos Blade that the Deacon has generously allowed him to wield after you guys recovered it from the uh, the first dungeon. And uh, yeah, at this point, uh, nine other souls have died, or ten other souls have died alongside Henry's adventures. Uh, and two more now have been added to that. But, um, yeah, uh, he's been sent on a variety of uh, tasks. And so you guys would know who he is at this point. He's probably the most famous guard in town. And uh, your captain, Captain Graft, uh, tells the three of you, or, the, yeah, the three of you, uh, yeah, looks like uh, Henry needs a few more bodies. <laughs> Go report to him. And you guys Boy, are down oh. in the, like, in the... Like the cafeteria and barracks area where uh, you guys eat, you're at this big old rickety wooden table, and they feed you some wonderful sloppy gruel for the day. Um, I'll, I'll introduce my guy. So you guys see a uh, a guy that probably doesn't look like he belongs there at all. He's got a, a black kind of robe on. He's very mangy and pretty gross looking. He's got a, a big long beard, and you see he's always kind of like kind of muttering to himself and scratching himself. And you see him kind of like wander off till he gets to a table. And then like he, he stops and he's just picking his nose very profusely um, before he eats. No, no, you, you fit right in. <laughs> That's a pretty standard <laughs> for this group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of them is constantly drooling, pushing his jaw yeah. back up. We had, we had one guy that had a a fucking talking horse that gave everybody shit. Oh, that's so, pretty awesome. Oh, yes, he died last week. Yeah, the horse is still around, but that guy's dead. Yeah, <laughs> big rip. Okay, uh, who else do we have joining this, our band of Cretans? Um, so, Grosh would walk up. Um, he is... Uh, kind of middle-aged with like heavy chains wrapped around himself um, long sword on his belt uh, pretty heavy armor and um, he uh, I'm just going over some of his stuff 
Um, he kind of um, mumbles under his breath when I was told to come, come to report to you, um, like really quietly. Um, and uh, he's got a mouth to mouth organ, is his instrument. And. Gross. Yeah, you guys don't want him to use it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't know. Hold on. What is a mouth-to-mouth -mouth organ? <laughs> yeah, I. I do so, I so that's. I believe that's his instrument. Okay. It's a bony mouth harp. And I use it on you guys to rep to f restore your HP. So I'm oh. assuming it goes to my oh. mouth to your mouth. Oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. And, uh, but I love it. Yeah. And it gives sense. you D4 HP. However, you cannot speak until your HP is fully recovered. Oh my god. Jeez, man. That's crazy. So, um, you know, use that information for what you will. Nice. Okay. The more uh, you know. Are you missing health, Sean? Yeah. All right. Well, if you let him do it, it's D. How much D four, right? Health. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, roll it mm, up. Uh, I'm not so sure. I, I wanna. You, you look a little injured. Do you need some help over there? No, no, I'm okay. You sure? I, I got yeah. you. Henry, Please stay outside Henry's of our range. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and then who's our last hero? In parentheses. Oh, that would be Drackel. And uh, Drackel walks up to you, uh, the rest of you boys, and he's kind of dressed in these tattered robes. He looks like a mockery of what uh, like royalty would look like. Uh, think like the back alley version of a king. <laughs> uh, weird crown. Um, and he is a dead god's prophet. Nice. He's very, he's very jittery, very fearful. Um, and he's got a, uh, recent eye wound. So he's, uh, covered it with a patch rather than do anything about it. Uh, and is constantly hearing the words of his God in his head day and night, like hot wires through his brain. <laughs> and his God is Nost. The Herald of Impotence. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. That's the reason he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't keep producing yeah, kids. Great. Very my nice. god was slain by the Basilisk She. Oh. Oh. Mm, yeah. Okay. Not, not sure of the lore, but okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> so no one wants... That's one of the heads of the two-headed Basilisk. Okay. Yeah, so so no one wants to hear what my god has to say because, you know, being dead and all. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are your new companions. Uh, Henry explains that you guys are going back to the Accursed Den. Uh, for the new three characters, if you guys would like to make a DR12 presence test to see if you've heard of this place before. Please, certainly. It's an 18 for Drackle. 19. Damn. You guys are pretty good at this game. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the two of you, the two of you have heard of the Accursed Den and that it belongs to the cannibal warlock, Fletcher. Uh, but the two of them have returned, albeit without two of their companions or with the bodies of two of their companions. You guys probably brought them back because so you guys have done that before. And uh, those two will be buried in the cemetery. But they explain, Henry explains that they have, they feel like they've slain pretty much everybody in the dungeon except the woman who escaped. And there's one door that they haven't been able to open. Uh, they're hoping that the kid is there, so they've come back to rest, recuperate, get some help, and get some equipment. So, after you guys are finished eating, uh, I assume you guys will probably head to the forge and get whatever equipment you're looking for there, Rilk. 
So yeah. you guys may do so. If anybody wants to buy anything with any silver they have, you may do so. Uh, and then we will proceed back to the den. Anyone got a uh, crowbar? That's a negative. No, just chains. Okay, maybe we can use those. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll just buy a crowbar for eight silver. I have poison. Okay. I also have poison. Oh, I got poison too. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we should just poison everybody. I wonder what it tastes like. Poison the door to death. <laughs> uh, but I, I do have, would anyone like some of this dried food I have? I'm quite full for my boogers. No, I have dried food of my own. I do have to get rid of some of this stuff so I can not have a negative modifier. Chris, can I find a uh, life elixir in the town? Ooh. Um, hmm. Maybe. Uh, give me a... Give me a dr 14 presence test. Nope. <laughs> oh, shit. Nope. Turns out the only one that had life elixirs was, uh, what's his face? Nagel. Nagel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, all of what he had has been destroyed since, uh, the raid. Well, them's the breaks, kid. <clears throat> Is there uh, any better weapon I could get than a knife? Yes. Yeah. Or ten uh, you, silver? You guys have access to the equipment, right? Yeah. Not for ten silver, I don't think. Ugh. All right. Uh, I mean, I've got silver to spare. What do you need? Well, I just thought of something maybe a little, you know, a little, uh, a little better than the knife. Although my character seems to be kind of like a necromancer kind of guy, but uh, what are your stats? I mean, feel free to look through the. Uh... The, the weapons folder. I mean, there's not a ton of weapons in this game, so... Yeah, but I would take, a, you know, something a little bigger than a knife. Well, yeah. my I, I don't know. My stat's negative three right now for strength because I'm uh, encumbered. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so that'll be negative... Uh... No, it's a negative three because that's your stat. That has nothing to do with your overcumbered. That's just what your character rolled. What's your, st oh. your stats your stats are between negative three and plus three when you start i see so your other stats are all at plus zero so they're just normal but your uh -huh. strength it's probably because uh most of the, the the classes they'll get like a negative to like one stat and then like a bonus to another stat and then you roll so my guess is that because you're the hermit i would imagine strength is supposed to be his weak stat so it just, ro it just rolled really shitty I see. What's your presence at? I got zero for everything else. Agility. Okay, so you should probably go ranged. Always. Ranged? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to roll that. But hey, an at 20, yeah. Um, Let's get I that can... out of the way. Make sure that's not useful today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Yeah, I mean, I would take a, I would take a, a bow, bow or a crossbow, whatever's cheap. Yeah, How much is 25. a short bow here? 25? Uh, th short bow's 13. Uh, uh, so it's a regular bow, but I mean, sure, yeah, short bow's oh, fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, whichever, toss whichever. me a uh, short bow's fine. <laughs> okay. And then uh, if you want to toss me three silver, that'll be great, and I'll pick that up. Yeah. Be sure you buy some arrows, too. Ooh. You're smart. you got the cunning. Yep. I'll give you 13 oh. silver so you can buy the arrows, too. Oh, thank you. Also, guys, I've decided that from now on, we're going to make ranged attacks use agility ah. uh, simply because I think that makes more sense. And there's already so much in this game that uses presence. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of Over uh, disproportionately used. And uh, yeah, we've used agility just for like when you guys walked across that bridge. <laughs> Which granted was great. but you know. <laughs> Kill the character, but I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it won't matter for Tyler because all of his stats are zero. But um, yeah, so we'll do we'll do ranged attacks as agility. All right. So uh, they're in a bundle of twenty for ten. So I would be needing thirteen. Yep. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right. And I think you just I, drag those on your sheet, Tyler. 
Okay, great. From the, the inventory screen. Uh, and uh, can I? I guess so. I'm still uh, encumbered. So could I maybe sell some of these things that I have? I'd like to keep the knife on me, but I would sell some of the uh, maybe my water and food if it would help. Uh, well, Henry has a wagon that you guys bring everywhere, so we can. Okay, great. Um, he can just put that in the wagon. All right. So I'll just put it off your character sheet. The food and the water. Yeah. Let's see if that helps here. Okay, hold on. I gotta. I gotta All right. If you wanna, you can just take them off your character sheet. All just right. delete them. It was three and four, and then I have. Uh... I have my short bow equipped. You're still over encumbered, though. Uh, can I put my poison in the wagon? Sure. All right. There we go. Okay. Yeah, his wagon's about half filled. Poison. So okay. Okay. I'm gonna make a note about that extra stuff I have, and all right, cool. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else? Or are you guys heading back? I'm good. Yep, I'm, I'm good. All right. Well, the group of you head back later that morning and return to the accursed den. So, put you all in the, uh, uh, well, it doesn't matter. You guys can just walk around wherever you want at this point. So, uh, this over here is where the locked doors were, if you guys want to move that way. Yeah. Well, actually, hold on. I got to move you through this wall here. Yeah. Can we uh, check these these guys? Has it got anything on them? These uh, little scrub hermit guys? No, they're they just have rags. Nothing. Just else. got rags on. All right. When you yeah. guys aren't looking, uh, Dorpat tries picking one of their noses. <laughs> okay. Did we check the other bodies of the people we'd killed? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is the locked door over here. Okay. So what do you have now that you're going to try to open this up with? Um, I've got a crowbar and <clears throat> Drocket. Is it Drocket has the heavy chains? Grolsch does. Grolsch, Grolsch has the heavy chains. It's just, I mean, like, Grolsch just wrap the fucking chains around the, the handle as best we can, and then I'll try to pry the door open while he pulls. And... Okay, well, I'm assuming the chain's long enough where everybody else can help pull, too. So... Yeah, it's 15 feet. Ooh. Easy. Okay. So like it's they're... wrapped around me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll drop it by two DR per person. So there's five of you. So we'll drop that from uh, 18 down to what, 10? Two, four, six. I'm sorry, down to eight. DR eight strength test. Okay. Um, I'm, I've got plus two strength, so I guess I'll roll. Well, you should, since you're the one with the crowbar. That makes the most sense, I think. Yeah, 15 total. All right. It takes a lot of effort, but between the chain and the crowbar, you are able to break this thing open, and you may open the door. <laughs> All right, guys, there's some weird scratching in here. Be ready for anything. And then, uh, you know, Henry elected me to suffer so i'll go in <laughs> yep so you open the door and inside you find what is clearly a prison on the left hand side of the room you can see there are a number of cells where there are several prisoners locked up um when you get in here the first thing you notice other than that it's so dark there's no torches in here you probably have to bring one from somewhere else um, or one of the oil lamps, is this repulsive stench of death and decay that makes you all want to vomit. There's just a pile of rotting, bloody corpses in the middle of the room here, uh, between this door and the other door, in front of the cells. And then in the cells, you can see that there are many prisoners. There are about ten of them. Uh, all of them are in dirty, filthy rags. They look, um, you know, like starved, dying, decrepit. And we've actually got a little bit of artwork for them, too. 
Jeez. They're all begging for help, reaching through the bars, pulling at the chains around their wrists and neck, pleading for help. Uh, all right, I guess. Uh, quickly look through, and do we see a kid? You do not. God damn it. Okay. Uh... Right. Uh, I guess we'll just start helping people escape, guys. Do you recognize anybody from town? Mm. Let's see. <laughs> you do not. Okay. Um, I mean, do we just leave these people here or help them? I mean, I don't think we can leave him to starve. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we just start opening a cage and or opening a cell and helping the people escape. Getting them out. <clears throat> okay. So Rilk, you open the first cell, which uh, just has one prisoner in it, and uh, as you do they reach through and they try to grab you please give me a dr12 agility test uh my agility is returned to normal since we got a 24 hour rest because our, our fletcher's thing like reduced my agility for a day yeah it's probably gone okay now it's back to zero <laughs> i can i can make agility tests now if it would click nope all right, so he throws the chains on his shackles around your head and gets it around your neck and starts to strangle you. Please give me a DR-12 strength test to break free. Okay. Nat 20. All right, you throw this guy over your shoulder. He goes smashing into the wall. His back hits the, the wall, the cell wall, and he hits the ground with an audible crack, and he's no longer moving. I'm gonna back out and close the cell door. Uh, Someone else can do this. I'm you know, not doing All the other prisoners are, like, freaking out. You know, they're rattling their chains, banging them against the cell door, screaming for help shaking the bars, trying to get the doors open, reaching out at you. I'm just gonna back out. That's someone else's problem now. One of them tried to kill me. Yeah, that guy really ruined it for everyone, didn't he? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Um, is, is anyone else here not murderous? <laughs> uh, they're all, like, kind of screaming or begging for you to let them out. Alright, well, that solves that then. Alright, never mind. Uh, just, you know, once yell out, Thurg, are you in here at Thurg? There is no response to Thurg. Am I mispronouncing his name? No, that's... Okay. That's a... Okay. All right, yeah, I mean... Um, and then this old man still here? <laughs> yep, hasn't moved. And then there was, like, a ghostly apparition up in nine we just ignored, right? I was uh, in the room next to it in number eight. eight nine eight. is where those gems were embedded in the wall. Drackle is instantly drawn to this old man because he, too, knows a thing about not being able to get up. <laughs> uh, he says and does nothing. He doesn't acknowledge you in any way when you start to inspect him. Knows to be with you. He is alive. He is breathing, but he says and does nothing. You're very weird, sir. And the uh, the sound of the violin music is still emanating from uh, where those two skeletons were on that pillar in the, oh. the sludge. 
uh, it's returned to kind of a melancholy rather than the franticness that when you guys were fighting Fletcher. Mm. I mean, I guess we could try asking the skeleton violinists, but I don't think they talked. But uh, maybe they would know. Any thoughts? What do you mean, Ooh. skeletons? There's oh. skeletons that are playing yeah. music here? Yeah, just follow me. <laughs> I'll just go. I'll, I'll go this I gotta I'll, see. I'll open the other door here. You guys can just move through the prison if you want. There's, yeah. You guys pretty much have free reign uh, to move around, so just move your, your token wherever you want to go. And, uh, yeah, so this here, uh, this right here, <clears throat> this, this little circle, that's a pillar. This massive pillar. Do I still have the artwork? The artwork was pretty cool. Oh yeah, here we go. Let's see if I can do this right this time. Um, was it this? Okay, what did that do? Uh, did it give you the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, hold on. What if I do this one instead? Ooh, yeah, there it is. Okay, I see. there it is. <laughs> so there's this tall pillar in this room uh all around it basically this black on the on the map you see tyler that is this pit of this like black sludge that is filling the room with this kind of acrid acidic stench and it's got these caustic fumes that are emanating up from the bottom uh for, from the surface of this this sludge that's what you see the smoke here in the image. But you see there are two skeletons on the top of this pillar, stranded, it seems. They're both playing violins uh, and doing nothing else. Uh, as we enter the room, they're still playing? Yes, yeah, you guys can hear it throughout the dungeon because most of the doors are open at this point. And as you get closer, uh, that's where you can eventually see where it originates from. Uh, Rilk and Henry would also explain that this stuff is basically like some sort of acid. Uh, someone fell in there last time and started, like, burning. So they tell you to not go into the acid. And that's where the big worm, but you can see the body of the big worm on the other end over here, along with uh, Fletcher's body as well, the warlock. So um, here's the gut worm. <laughs> and then Fletcher's sick-ass art, one of my favorites so far. Very cool. Big hulking tattooed man. Oh, and let's not forget the nesting death. Oh, yeah. Which, which Henry, oh, like, one shot? Spider. <laughs> yeah, uh, there were two of them. The first one, you guys wrecked with the bomb, remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad I kept buying those. And these dead bodies gone. Okay, yeah. So, um... Yeah, so you go there, the skeletons are still there, and they are continuing to play their music when you enter. Um, hello? Do you know where a small boy named Throg is? Eric. They don't stop, but one of them turns to face you guys when you address it. And the music changes slightly. Oh, Drackle, like, kind of pees himself a bit. <laughs> does it turn scary, or does it... No, it's, uh, it's less melancholic. Ah. I see. Is he still in the dungeon, or did he escape? The music gets a little bit more cheerful. Ooh, that, I think I think he might have escaped, guys. Yeah, it's, it's like a good sign, right? I, I think so. We're taking signs from skeletons playing music. Dog, there's a giant fucking worm that ate one of my friends right there, okay? I'm I'm working with what I got. Yeah, these, uh, these guys seem to have some sense in them, at least. Okay. What's the next question? I have, I have no idea. 
I don't. I mean, if he's escaped the dungeon, I don't think they would know, right? Uh, did he go somewhere where there are trees? Huh? We can narrow it down. Well, keep in mind, you asked, is he still here or did he escape? You asked two things in one, so you're not sure what they're indicating when they replied. But to your question, uh, Dorpat, if that is your real name, <laughs> uh, the music gets uh, kind of sad and depressing again. Oh, I think that means no. I'm sorry, I... I... What did what did your what was your question? I asked if he went somewhere where there are trees. Hmm. Okay. And then when I asked, I asked two questions, so it could have been either one that they responded to. Uh Oh, you know what? Before we go any further, we forgot to roll the misery die, because another day has passed. Oh yeah. Oh, oh shit. Tyler, if you'd like to do the honors. Uh, oh no. Roll, 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 we're rolling a D4 these days, I think. Yeah. Uh roll D4. If you roll a one, another sign of the apocalypse happens. Oh. And the world gets one step closer to doom and destruction. Oh, I love it. And it, it looks like we're very close to that uh point already. Yeah, we're ha we're more than halfway. If it happens seven times, the world oh, ends. Oh my god. All right. Dorpat puts both his fingers in both his nostrils for extra luck here. <laughs> oh, it worked! Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. It worked! Not today, God. <laughs> so that means one of the miseries disappears and we're back down to three, right? No, 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 no. Get the fuck out of here. So, <laughs> game's over, everybody dies. <laughs> okay, do you ask these skeletons anything else? Um... Uh... I guess a clarifying question. Look, is he still in the dungeon? The music gets very fast and hyper. Okay. Still in here. Uh Drackle would tug on your sleeve, Sean, and go, mm -hmm. uh ask it to look in the direction we should go. Oh, okay, yeah. Can you look in the direction we need to go? Find the boy. So the music shifts um, kind of back towards the melancholic uh, tone. And both of them kind of do this twirl, very almost like slow motion twirl uh, on like one foot. And they're both facing the direction of the statue. Okay. Or this room. They're not sure exactly what they're facing, but that's that's where they're looking. Okay. That's a good question, Drackle. Yeah, way to go. Wait, wait, you're gonna fit right in. You should you should give them a tip. They've been playing music for this long for us. Yeah. I uh. I'm out of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh. I can leave uh, him one of my arrows, but uh, you know, I don't know if they're gonna I'm use not, that. I, mean, I, mean, I guess I can leave him some silver. Yeah, yeah. Your music is very good. Thank you for helping. And I'll leave like five silver. And I'll just leave, leave it there on the floor. Yeah, I'll leave uh, five more. Do you want okay. us to like flick it into the the sludge, or how do you guys get it? Uh, well, they when you leave the the coins when you take them out, they the music changes, you know, to kind of like a more upbeat tune for a moment, just mm -hmm. a couple notes, and then it goes back to like their regular song. All right, not bad. Yeah, I guess we'll just put it down. Okay, thank you. Bravo. <laughs> Go over to fucking 12. <laughs> okay. So again, there is this big statue, a stone statue of an old uh, king. And uh, it's King Leonard II. And uh, there is an obvious opening where one of his eyes should be. So it's like the, the statue's been carved and on one side, his right eye, it's carved like a normal statue. Like, it looks like it's carved with like an eyelid and an eye. But the left side, where the left eye would be, it's clear that there's a huge indentation and a big opening um, where, you know, it looks like the eye was not carved instead of just a big opening. 
It's not huge, but compared to the eye, the other eye, it's larger. And he's uh, uh, he's wearing a long robe. There's many nice intricate folds, and he's. It looks like he's sitting. The way the statue's been made, he's sitting on like a bench. There's a crown on his head that's been carved as well. Uh, you can see there's a huge beard, basically covers you know the side of his face and runs all the way down to like the middle of his chest. Um, and in his lap has been carved a big skull with two massive horns that kind of poke out the back and curl up a little bit. And he's got his right hand is like on his knee or on his leg like resting. And the left uh, hand is on top of the skull, kind of like if somebody had a basketball in their lap, but it's it's the skull instead. Uh, okay. And the statue, the statue is, um, you can kind of tell here, it's uh, the back of the statue is towards the skeletons, the front of the, ske the statue is facing this wall, and then you've got doors on either side. And it's kind of up on like a raised plinth. And then underneath that, yeah, at the bottom of the plinth, it says King Leonard II. It's made out of black, some sort of black stone. Okay. Um, so we could maybe try moving it, or we just got to find something to slot into his missing eye. Um, can I go back to the old man and take a look at him and, like, raise up his fucking hood and see if he's missing one of his eyes? He is not. Okay. Um, you do notice as well uh, that the the statue um, where the the missing eye is, you can see there are stains of some sort. Can I take a closer look? Looks like dried blood. Oh, cool. So, um, I guess we just got a fucking stab an eye in here. <laughs> okay. Why is there blood coming out of the statue? Um, did we uh, look through room fourteen? When we went yes, there? you've you've looked through every room at this point. Okay, great. Do we see anything around that might be like eye shaped that we can slot in? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, there's there's about ten such items I could point you to. Let's let's, let's try let's try one of their eyes. Um, can we go grab one of these uh, gemstones? Yeah, you can grab the gemstones. Any look like we could fit them in to the eye slot? Um, let me check. Otherwise, I'm just going to go grab one of Fletcher's eyes. and. Roll me a d4, Sean. All right. <laughs> Two. So you mess around with some of these gemstones. Two of them do do come out of the wall. The others are just stuck. They will not move or budge no matter what you try. Uh, but they, once you get them out, you realize they are way too big. They're yeah. like the size of a softball. Alright. Well, um, I'm just going to go scoop out one of Fletcher's eyes. Okay. You gouge out one of his eyes. It's disgusting. Yeah. But you have it. Uh, go, I guess, slot it into the missing eye socket. All right, so you put it in there, unsure what's going to happen, and when you take your hand away, to your surprise, the eye does not just fall out, and you hear a loud crack from behind you, and this wall opens up, and there is a room hidden through the, okay. through the door. Uh, and let me where my notes go. Here we go. Uh, so inside this, uh, there's like this big, basically, like part of the wall, like moves out of the way. This you hear the the grinding of stone on stone as this stone wall part of the door moves out of the way, and um, as that happens. I need everybody to give me a DR-16 agility test. As you realize the floor you're standing on begins to tilt back towards the acid. 
Uh, I'm going to use uh, an omen to reduce the DR for that by four. <laughs> I'm okay. going to re-roll with my one omen. So I succeed with a 14. Yeah, no. 14. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll use a omen to re-roll as well. The re-roll stands? Yeah. Is that how it works? You could also, if you guys want to explain how omens work for him, because he got so, 12. Yeah, so the... Uh, there's a couple ways for omens under the rules tab. Um, you can re-roll or you can re reduce the DR of an, uh, a check by four. Um, you can neutralize a crit or fumble or lower damage dealt to you um, or deal max damage with an attack. So uh, if you roll like a 12 and you only need a 14, I would just uh, lower the DR by four instead of re-rolling. Oh, okay. I will, uh, yeah. I will do that then. Yeah, it's it's sixteen, but same thing. I'll be able to hit it right on the money then, because you got to yeah. equal or beat the thing. So, um, okay, so door pat, you pass because you spend an omen. Did anybody else pass? Uh, Jackal did not. passes with an omen. Okay. It's dr sixteen. Oh, you used you used to lower it. Okay, and yeah. then. Uh, Ross did not. Are you going to spend an omen? No. Okay. <laughs> And uh, who else failed? Trap? Dracul. Okay. Yeah. So the as that happens, Rilk, I'm, uh, Rilk and Dorpat, you guys are fast enough to get into the room as the floor begins to tilt. Unfortunately, your two companions here, they are not fast enough, and they uh, slip and slide and take a splash into the black sludge and it instantly begins to burn and i believe this was a toughness test let's see <laughs> dr8 toughness test or you take d4 damage that's this is with passing no this is for the ones that fell into the water oh, for the okay. sludge 12. okay you Dang. guys uh do not take any damage um, and I'll need, give me a strength test to swim your way to the other side, because it is quite deep. Oh, boy. Uh, DR 12. All That's right, Dracul, no. I need you to make another toughness test as it takes you a little bit longer to get out of the sludge. Okay, you're okay, and eventually you make your way out, so. Uh, luckily, the gut worm is dead, so you don't um, get eaten while you go swimming. However... Rilk and Dorpat, you guys get to this room, and inside, um, it's quite hot and congested and confined in here, but you see there is a small bench, and you see a young boy, rather pudgy, gnawing <laughs> on a few bones, and there's a bookshelf in here with, uh, there's an iron hook on the bookshelf, and there's a mirror and a crossbow with four bolts. Hanging on the wall is a wicked-looking whip that looks like it's made out of bone. Ooh, and there's cool. a couple bowls in here with some water and some food. Hey, you Thurg? Assume you're Thurg. He looks up with a grunt, still trying to suck the marrow out of this bone. Yeah, okay. Uh, does it look like a human bone? Hard to tell. Okay. Well, your mom uh, wanted us to come find you, so get up. Let's go. Uh, he doesn't get up. He keeps sucking on the bone. Look at door, Pat. We can come on, fatty ding dong. Let's go. <laughs> There's more bones on the road. <laughs> I'm going to take he, out, like, a thing of lard. Like, come on, you want this? Uh, give me a, uh, give me a DR-12 presence test. <laughs> 20. He instantly drops the bone and snatches the thing of lard and begins to follow you. All right. Also, I'm going to grab that bone whip. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll grab the crossbow and hand it off to someone. Yeah. Uh, it's got four bolts. Nice. Sick. And Sean, you are the new proud owner of the Necro Whip. 
Oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, just put it in your inventory. And I'll share the art with everybody. Oh, this my. strange, jagged looking thing. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. So cool. Nice. Excellent. Watch me break this one. <laughs> uh, if you'd like to explain everybody what it uh, does here, Sean. Okay. Covered in cryptic runes, can be used as either ranged or melee weapon. Uh, D4 damage, necroplasmic shock. Living targets that suffer damage must make a DR10 toughness test or turn undead. Undead targets suffer 2D4 damage. Well, goddamn. <laughs> you can now go uh, live out your Indiana Jones undead fighting <laughs> dreams that you've always had. Yeah, Sick. Castlevania style. Pretty oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! So cool. You are Rilter Belmont. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So we leave the fat kid out. Okay. All right. Well, you return back to the town of Cravenford with your pudgy little friend, <laughs> and there is much rejoicing and celebration, uh, including a very happy Borga, his mother who cannot believe she's gotten her pudgy little boy back. She thanks you all profusely, and um, once again, Henry gets most of the credit. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, however, uh, Sean and Henry, you guys will get to get better because you survived the entire dungeon. Nice. Unfortunately, our new players don't get to ride those coattails quite yet. All right, so just do that now, I guess. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. We'll let Matt do his next time, so we'll not forget that. Uh, so getting better tiles, basically leveling up in this game, uh, basically just happens whenever we decide. And uh, not bad. Yeah, gain an HP, gain a strength, lose agility, gain a presence, gain a toughness. And also, the two gems are worth 200 silver each. Oh! So cool. Oh, damn, you guys are rolling in it now. And you've got a new crossbow as well that one of you can use. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I'll probably, if no one wants the crossbow, I'll probably sell the short bow and I'll uh, use the crossbow. Yep. Uh, sure. So I'll sell the, the two gems and then split the results across the party. So they're 200 apiece each. Yep. There's five of us. Yeah, you could do the math on that one. <laughs> I only do math for HPs. <laughs> Each person, including Matt, can put 80 additional silver in their pockets. Oh my Holy god. Holy shit. Sick. I'm gonna buy some armor when we go. I can buy stuff armor. now. <laughs> yeah, it might be a good time. Um, yeah, you guys, you guys have some, some a little downtime if you guys want to do that and um, purchase some equipment and then... Uh, we can proceed. Yeah, does he have, does he have medium armor? Uh, yes, he does. Okay. Is this something we want to let Matt buy to keep Henry alive? He has two suits of medium armor for sale at the moment. Okay. Okay. You said 80 gold yes. or yep. silver? Okay. okay, I'm adding that to Matt's man. Matt's pretty rich right now. Nice. Well, uh, if no one else is going to buy it, I'll buy one of the medium pieces of uh, medium armor. I already have any, medium armor. Any light? Uh, yeah, there's I, light armor. I, I can give you my light. <laughs> oh. I'm, oh. I'm wearing light, so I'll give that to you, and then I'll just buy the medium. Excellent. Well, he the light armor's not... I mean, armor's made for one person, so you oh, can't just... Right, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Either take... it gets refitted or you buy it. Either way, we'll just count it as the same cost. So, Okay. Well, I'll um, do that then. I'll do light okay. armor. So, do I just throw it away or can I sell my light armor back to him for like a discount or crap it? Uh, no, he probably realizes that you guys are loaded and you keep coming back to buy shit from him so he's not going to buy stuff back from you. Okay, so All I right. will just scrap it then. Alright, <laughs> yeah, does anyone want the short bow and the arrows? I'll probably scrap them then too. If he's not going to buy it. Yeah. Uh, I'll oh. take the short bow if nobody oh. else wants it. Oh, you, you go, go ahead. It. No, no, no. What do you do? You have anything right now, Eric? Uh, I only have a long uh, sword. 
A sword? Yeah, I have a sword. I'll take the sword. Can we do that? Do what? Swap, Swap weapons? weapons. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I, don't oh. know. I just Chris, want to be. I just want you to say no. Permanently glued to your inventory. It cannot be removed <laughs> other than with death. They are so I, <laughs> I am I am dropping. I drop the short bow and the arrows on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let some villager pick just like up. like Diablo style, just <laughs> cling. Yeah, just flies out and clangs on the ground. Yeah, I'll hand he's like, I don't like need this kid. anymore. And then uh, I'm gonna buy uh, I'll buy some bolts. I had four to start with. Uh, they cost ten for ten, so I'll buy I'll buy uh, I'll just buy ten, so I got fourteen for now. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, and sorry, where was there a limit to what armor he had? Uh, he has two medium and he has uh, two light armors available. Mm, I'll take a I'll take a light armor for twenty. All right. Well, that's all he has left then is a medium because I think someone else already bought light armor. So. And I already I bought one of the mediums. So. Okay. Uh, does he have a shield? Yes. Okay. We'll do we'll do one of those. Yes, yeah, so you're taking my sword. Yes. <clears throat> okay, and then I'm taking the short bow. Okay. Um, and how many arrows was it? And you're just gonna die anyway. How many arrows was it? Uh, I don't I don't know. I think there was twenty arrows. Yeah. Who had the who had the bow? It was twenty arrows. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to drop my knife then too. Can I toss the knife in the wagon? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yahoo! <laughs> I am overburdened. I am overburdened. You see, you see Dorpat looking at the like pointing the crossbow towards his face, like looking at it <laughs> down the down where the the bolt sits. <clears throat> and then, and then you see him like take one of the bolts and kind of sort of inch it towards his nose <laughs> but he doesn't do it just like put, put my hand up he's just got kind of like he could see he's thinking about it but he doesn't do it all right uh is that is that all the shopping we need to take care of i think so okay. um yeah we need to find a way to cure henry of this goddamn <clears throat> disease it's true. He has plenty of stuff left for now, but um, you know, it's not going to last forever. Also, Chris, can I roll for my daily uh, scroll? Sure. Like, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, D10 to see if it's clean or unclean, I guess. Five. Uh, that'll be a the scrolls. That'll be a sacred scroll. Okay, and then and a, another D10. D10. A big old ten. Whispers past the gate. Ask three questions to a deceased creature. Ooh, speak with undead, okay? <laughs> that would have been helpful to ask Fletcher, where's the boy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would have been nice. All right, well, later that evening, as has become customary when you guys have completed a mission, the deacon holds another one of her sermons in the Temple of the Becklure inside the Rotting Oak. Once again, pretty much the entire town is there <clears throat> packing the temple. A couple guards are here along with Captain Graft, and uh, the, the five of you are off to the side, kind of uh, where you're usually standing. And once again, the deacon, she emerges from seemingly out of nowhere and proceeds to make her way back behind the altar. Once again, she begins another one of her sermons, giving thanks to the Becklur and proclaiming how uh, he watches over you and watches over his flock, keeping young Thurg safe from the depredations of the cannibals. And once again, you, mostly Henry, are lauded as heroes 
for not only bringing Third back, but slaying the cannibal warlock and his coven. Um, when uh, when this is all said and done, eventually everybody departs for the evening, and it looks like this time the deacon does not seem to have anything to speak to you guys about. So eventually she disappears uh, back into the shadows and the sermon comes to an end and then the group of you are, uh, you know, left to leave and eventually everybody departs the temple and night begins to fall once more on Cravenford. Unless there's anything anybody does, we will proceed to the next day. No, nope. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what happens at this point, um, some time goes by without anything really happening. Um, you discuss perhaps that you need to find a cure for Henry's uh, affliction of the goblin curse. And it occurs to you, uh, probably Rilke and Henry, because you guys were here originally, uh, Torben, the wretched royalty that uh, Scar had been playing, uh, had looted on one of, uh, one of the enemies you fought. He had found a map to a weak but wealthy family manor out in the wilderness. You think that perhaps this might be something worth investigating. Perhaps you can, if nothing else, find some loot there. But yeah. you never know. Now, right now, it seems, though, things in the town are quiet and there are no imminent dangers that need your attention. We have to roll another misery. We are going to roll. I'm going to see how many days pass before you guys decide to do this. We'll do D6 days. Tyler, please roll me three more D4s for oh Miseries. My God, it's me again? All right, good lord. <laughs> You're the okay. gift. Mm -hmm. Oh boy! All right, well, one at a time, right? All right, They're all here we together. go. If, if any of them come up as a one, then only one Misery will happen at a time. Uh, I'm gonna keep everyone in suspense. Here's one. Ooh, two. All right. Put a lucky bolt in my nose. <laughs> two. Oh Pull the god. Trigger. All right. Pull the trigger. All right. He's got two bolts in, in each of his nostrils right now. <laughs> ah, oh. There it is. Another misery occurs. Mark it off on your character sheet. We are up to five. Oh, and no. then Tyler, if you would please roll me a D, roll me two D six, and tell me the two numbers that you roll. All right. Do we have some crazy apocalyptic music we can play? Not really, but. What did? Why did this die? All right. There is a three and a six. 36. All right. So on the calendar of Neshrabal, here is the prophecy that comes true, pointing towards the end times, inching closer. Brother shall slay brother, and sister shall poison sister. A rash of fights, murders, and poisonings sweep over Craven Ford as many siblings turn amongst one another, killing each other in a deluge of violence. Unbeknownst to all of you, this happens throughout the dying world, throughout the continent. As many people, for whatever reason, perhaps from lack of hope, perhaps from madness, or perhaps for some other nefarious reason, turn amongst those they once called brother and sister. Many lives are lost. 
cemetery is filled and busy with all the bodies that must be uh, that must be uh, taken care of. And once again, the sign of the apocalypse is brought on by the black salt rain. I will need Tyler. Please roll me a. Oh, uh, what is it? Roll me a d4, please. Oh boy. All right, I'm good at these guys. <laughs> yeah. One. Okay. A weak, vile gust of the black salt washes over the plateau once again, as it has with all the other miseries. Uh, it's not as bad as it could be. This is as, as low as it can go. I need everyone, including Henry here, to make a DR8 toughness test. If you pass, you are fine. But if you fail, I need you to roll a D12. Ooh, I get an 11. Uh, I use one of my omens. Ooh. Ouch. Um, a two. Oof. Three failures here. Yep. I'm going to use an omen to bump mine up, so I pass. I have okay. One Omens can uh, re-roll. Re-roll yes. or reduce the DR by, was it four? Four, yeah, but at a two. <laughs> That's yeah. not going to work. Yeah. yeah. I guess I'll try and re-roll. That was a friggin' easy one. That's BS. There we go, Grolsch. All right, so Drackle, please roll me a d12. One. Your eyes burn. You weep <laughs> black tears forming a facial salt crust. Presence and agility tests are minus two for the next d4 hours. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that's, that's as good as it can get. Presence and agility are at minus two. Yep, for... Oh. We'll take your roll. Uh, one hour, okay. okay. All right, well, it's not as bad as it could be. There aren't people dying in droves in the streets like before, but nonetheless, it uh, it is not great. It's not a pleasurable experience. So, the group of you decide to go check out this mansion on this map that Torben has bequeathed to you upon his death to the black salt that we had a few days ago, a few weeks ago. Um, you set out, try to go find this place, and I will need somebody, and by that I mean Tyler. Oh my only god, a, again? Roll me a D. There's a lot of procedural generation in Merkbor. Roll me a D8 to see the condition of the road you travel on. And then roll me a d20 to see what type of encounter we have. Okay. All right, d8 coming up. A one! An almost forgotten dirt track. It seems this mansion is off in the middle of nowhere. No way you'd find this without the map you feel. Please roll me a d20 now. d20 up next. How about a 12? Okay. On your way to the mansion, you come across a procession of flagellants and what look like perhaps homeless hermits that are uh, clearly a religious procession of some sort. They are striking themselves with, you know, whips and chains screaming and wailing in agony, throwing their hands and heads up in the air as if to raise a higher power. And you can tell from uh, their chants and their religious garble that they seek one of the heads of the two-headed basilisk, him. But they appear to be lost. What do you guys do? As you pass this group and they pass you, they eye you strangely. Some of them stop asking you where they can go to find him. We yeah, know I... who they're referring to by him. Yes, everybody knows of the two-headed basilisk. The 
apocalypse table, the calendar of Netrabul. Netrabul is believed to be the prophet, uh, and like the uh, like the prophet of the two-headed basilisk, so to speak. Uh, Dorpath says, you know, I, I, I've always felt like, you know, the, the heads of the basilisk, like, they find you, you know, they're in, <laughs> they're in your heart. You don't find them. Give me a DR 12 presence test. Three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do not take kindly upon what you say. No, oh, no. They feel as though you are mocking the basilisk and that you are speaking heresies. And uh, they attempt to attack you guys. Oh, man. <laughs> well, rather than do a long drawn nice combat here, um, each of you, please give me a DR 14 defensive roll, because there's quite a few of them. They're not, you know, very strong, but there's a lot of them. They basically just set upon you, trying to beat you, strike you, um, you know, whip you, flagellate you. Oh, dear. And make you repent for your horrible heresies you've spotted. I'm not going to roll uh, <laughs> anything above uh, a six here today. Um, What's the damage, D6? Ooh. Uh, the damage is... Uh, what are my notes here? Well, so here's the thing. Dracula is a huge scaredy cat, so his it's, dodging isn't like a like agility. He's it's a lucky. it's a it's a straight D four, but it ignores your armor because they uh, they're just kind of dogpiling you, and uh, the armor's not going to protect you from all this. Oh, uh, so if you fail, you take one damage. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'll I'll take the one damage. If you pass, you uh. You manage to fight them off, or your armor takes most of the hit. Take a damage. And, uh, yeah, after they're done sufficiently beating you and making you <laughs> repent for your heresies and blasphemies to him, they proceed back down the dirt path, screaming, striking themselves, and giving glory to him. We just got our asses beat. <laughs> that was awfully rude. And, uh... Um, for the fuck. <laughs> that uh, that leads us to our halfway point. So we'll take our break here, grab <laughs> some Dr. Pepper, and think about what you've done. <laughs> Don't you ever take the name of the Basilisk in vain again. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, tough wow. but fair. Tough but fair. Tough welcome, crowd. Welcome to Merkvor. Yeah. <laughs> Where random, you know, priests just go around beating ass of city guards. I mean, to be fair, that happened to us in Warhammer, too. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, okay. I could bitch about that all day. Instead, I'm going to bitch about Walking Dead and how much I hate Carl. <laughs> Understandable <laughs> and a reasonable. Fucker. Yeah. Is that we show are... still going on? Uh, No, the main series is done. But I bitched about it earlier today to uh, uh, to Sean and Eric on, on Tale <laughs> 4 Gamers because I've been re-watching and I'm towards the end of season two. And I just watched the episode where Carl gets Dale killed and Carl breaks all the fucking rules uh... and Carl <laughs> fucks everything up for everybody. So um, Poor Dale. Yeah, when it when it got to the episode where Carl died, spoilers by the way, listeners, if you haven't heard this, but the, the show is eleven years old at this point or whatever. So <laughs> And it's um, <laughs> Hey now, I'm fighting words. Um the uh when Carl died, I was not sad. All I could think of was, that's what you get, you little bastard. I didn't forget. I didn't forget what you did to Dale, all right? Never forget. It's been like eight seasons, but I didn't forget, all right? Like, Dale was never going to make it to the end of the show. We all know that. But who got him killed? The stupid kid. You know what? Like, should have been him in the barn rather than Sophia. I bet Sophia wouldn't have gotten Dale killed. Little prick. <laughs> What was even more funny is I'd actually gotten Jeffrey Dunn's autograph uh, on like a Walking Dead trading card because Dale was my favorite character back at the beginning of the show. And uh, it was like I got it. And I think like the next week is when his character got killed. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember Max like laughing at me. I'm like, well, you know, 
But the writing was on the wall. If it wasn't him, it was probably going to be Shane. But Yeah, but yeah. Shane. Yeah, so good, though. Anyway. Yeah, seasons one and two, fucking perfection. Great, great stuff. We'll we'll see. I'm gonna. I'm really trying to pay attention. When does it feel like the show shifts? Because I think watching it back to back like this, rather than over the course of ten years, will be a vastly different experience. So uh, maybe have a better idea and see what 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 stays good and what doesn't. So, anywho, listeners, let's dive back in here. So you guys uh, continue your track after getting pummeled by this religious procession, and eventually. The dirt path winds through the forest and the trees. Eventually, you come across a large, somewhat dilapidated looking manor. Looks like it's two floors, and it looks like at one point it was a very nice, elaborate house. Obviously, clearly very expensive, but it looks like it is in a state of disrepair, decay, and perhaps even abandonment. There does not seem to be any activity of any sort. It is quiet, and there is the sound of the wind whistling through the trees, dead leaves kind of brushing over the dirt path, but otherwise it is eerily quiet. Um... So does the map, uh, what does the, like, the map actually show us? Just, like, the way to the house? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I offer my healing services to the others. (laughs) Does anybody need a hand? Uh, I could go, kid, if you could heal me up one. I'll take it. I'm just going to use a medicine box. (laughs) All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out my mouth to mouth organ. I don't think I actually did a rest for Henry. I'm gonna do that right now. Oh, four HPs. All right, go Henry. All right, you're gonna get D four HP. Let's see. Nice, I'll take it. I only um, need one, but well, we we got like four three there days of re- three or four days of rest, oh, wow, right? Chris? Oh, that's right. You Are you at full health? Full. Yeah, you I'm at back. full health. Yeah, we, we should, because we, we should get, like, three or four actual full days of rest. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you guys are <laughs> full then. Yeah. <laughs> no mouth-to-mouth for me, Eric. Oh. Uh, <laughs> when I'm good at, I'm good at one thing. <laughs> no mouth-to-mouth. <laughs> you seductress, you. Um, so can we, like, scope the outside of the house, see if there's, like, anything shady going on, if there's a back door? Sure. So the house basically is built in this clearing and the nearest edge of the forest is probably about 30 to 40 yards from any point of the house. And it looks like there's really no way out other than the path that you guys have taken to get here. You could certainly go through the trees, but you don't see any other paths or roads or anything like that. As you circle around the house, uh, you do not see anything, anything else. It is quiet and desolate. Okay, so just like front door, no back door, a couple windows? Uh, yeah, there's probably a, a back door or side entrance. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess we want to go in the front door, guys, or we want to go in the back door, or what's that? I'm gonna vote for front door. See yeah. what there is to see. All right, door to go in. All right, let's kick down the front door. Lightly. Back doors for special occasions, you know. <laughs> you know, like anniversaries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, sorry, you're kicking down the front door. Yeah, no, we're gonna open it. Open it, you know, gently. It creaks open, revealing a large central main hall. There is an old, what once was probably luxurious, thick red carpet that leads throughout the house. 
And you can see in here, there is a massive staircase uh, that leads up to the second floor. And it's there's two staircases, one on either side of the hall, the left and the right. And then they, they go up alongside the wall, and then they meet towards the top, and then they connect into a, a single staircase that leads up. Uh, so there's, you know, there's two, two parts of the staircase, but it goes up to the second floor. Big, massive uh, banisters uh, that make up the railings. There's an uh, old, but still somewhat nice looking chandelier, but there's uh, a couple of pieces that are broken or have fallen or perhaps been even stolen. Um, the house is quiet. There's no lights on of any sort. So there's a lot of shadows. I mean, it's it's midday right now, so you do have some daylight. But uh, it's quiet. And it looks like there's uh, basically a hall to the right and a hall to the left. A um, couple statues in here, fancy artwork. Again, all of it crumbling, decaying, perhaps defaced, stolen, or otherwise left to disrepair. And the th one thing, the most bizarre thing that none of you can even really comprehend is in the middle of this room, it appears to be hovering in the center of the hall is a huge, massive skull. And by massive, I mean it's bigger than any of you could easily swallow one of you if you were to walk through its open mouth. Uh, and it turns and faces you all when you walk through the doorway. Are we more creeped out than harp playing skeletons? Uh, it's definitely creepy. Uh, Drackle shrieks and then immediately covers his mouth. So it's like a millisecond of like. Even though there is no eyes in this skull, you feel like it has this piercing gaze that is staring right through each of you. Um, do we see any like dead bodies around it? Nope. Okay, okay, that's a good sign, unless it ate him. Well, someone say hello. Hello, giant scary skeleton. It says and does nothing. Well, it is kind of stuck there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if we like move around, does it follow us? No. Um, after a few moments, it begins to turn, and it seems to just kind of be facing in a random direction. Okay. Is there a hallway in that direction? Um, not exactly. Not precisely. It. Uh, it looks like it's facing just like a random wall. Can we investigate where it's looking? Sure. Yeah, you can find like a, it might be important. Maybe it's trying to give us a clue, guys. Find a solid wooden wall where it appears to be staring. Um, I put my hand on the wall and try to walk through it. It's solid. All right. That's not it. <laughs> it's a solid wall. Um, well, all right. Uh, can I look around the room? Is there anything else inside this room that the giant skeleton is in? Uh, or skull? Other than what I've already described, no. Okay. Um, so the wall isn't doing anything. And then we've got two hallways we can go that are just kind of ignoring the skull. Yeah, basically goes to either wing of the house. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, like, the Resident Evil staircase that leads up to the second floor. 
Yes. But it's there's two staircases rather than a single one. And then they, they meet like halfway up on a landing, and then that makes one staircase that goes up to the, the rest of the way. Okay. Do you guys want to check out one of the hallways and just ignore this very ominous skull? Yeah, let's take a look around. Skulls are right about everything. Right. Yeah, yeah, anywhere but here. You know, I do have that ability, the whispers past the gate. I don't know if just a floating skull is counted as a deceased creature, but it might be. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll save that for later. Maybe, yeah. You know. Worst case. So, the, the hallways, just because there's no map for this, so this is all theater of the mind right now. Mm -hmm. Um, the hallways off of the main hall go to the east and west. The skull, and you guys came through the door, you came through the south, so you, you were walking north to enter this. You guys are facing north when you come through the door. The The main door is on the south wall. The staircase is on the north part of the wall, uh, the hall, or the main hall. The skull is kind of facing towards the northeast. Like kind of that corner of the the main hall. Okay. <laughs> kind of drawing out a quick sketch so I have a vague idea. <laughs> uh, so you guys want to go west or east? East. Uh. Yeah, east is fine for starters. All right. East it is. Well, you head down the hall. Uh, the carpet is still in here. It's very dusty as you guys step. Every step shoots up a little cloud of dust. There's cobwebs hanging in every corner and archway. And think, uh, think kind of like the house from Haunting. Was it Haunting of Hill House? It's kind of like like that. It's these big hallways, you know, massive wooden walls that were once very nicely painted and fine fine wood, perhaps oak, or something equally expensive. Every time you walk, it creaks. The house seems to moan and shift with every step. And there's a couple doors on either side of the hallway. Um, as you search and try, some of the doors do not open. They appear to be jammed, rusted shut, and no matter how much force you try, they refuse to open. Uh, others reveal old, empty bedrooms with decaying, decrepit furniture. Again, covered in cobwebs, creaking house. Um, if you search any of these rooms, you find various items in states of disarray and decay. Wardrobes with moldy, modded clothing. Um, you know, Bed sheets that have been moth-eaten and are starting to fall apart. Furniture that looks like it's been abandoned for years, if not longer. Windows caked in dust and filth. Occasionally, perhaps even a window that's been shattered or a window pane that's been busted out, leaving shattered glass on the floor, leaving an eerie sound of the wind whipping through various parts of the house. Um... You do eventually find your way through a, a kitchen, which you think at one point was probably quite opulent and nice, but has since fallen into disrepair like the rest of this building. Eventually, um, you do find what's like a, like an art gallery. You enter this room, there are several massive portraits lining the walls all of them covered in dust and looking like they haven't been uh, viewed in quite some time. Some of them even have curtains over them or drapes. Uh, perhaps they were uh, meant to be moved and they were being stored or protected, uh, trying to be covered from the elements to some degree, or perhaps there was a showing and they were not revealed. Um, the portraits reveal mostly portraits of individuals, you're guessing perhaps family members uh, that once lived here or perhaps just subject of the artist's work. Others are landscapes and things you would associate with traditional artwork. You know, when you look at it, you realize this is meant to be a fine piece of art. 
No, one one art, please. Um, <laughs> yeah. You also see in here there's a massive old cobweb riddled and no longer shiny but dusty grand piano and there's uh, a couple benches here to sit on obviously to view the artwork there's a few statues in here as well that are clearly meant to be of an artist's uh, rendition you know sculptures and things of that up on large plinths or uh uh, display uh, stands and even a few cabinets, glass cabinets with random artifacts and curios. Many of the cabinets have been smashed or glass has been broken. Many items are stolen or scattered about. You see strange knickknacks and trinkets, uh, some of them like old decorative weapons, like perhaps an old dagger or rusted uh, military saber. Uh, you see things. Uh, you know, like archaeological uh, finds, you know, maybe a, a fossil or rocks or a sample of uh, some sort of wood or ancient tree, old books, things of that nature. But the strangest, uh, as you guys are looking around in this room, again, you only have the daylight outside, and there's really never true daylight here in the dying world. It's always, at best, an overcast gray and whatever small beams of sun can make their way through the clouds give you quote-unquote sunlight. So there's lots of shadows in here. There are two massive windows on the far side of the room opposite of the door that you are assuming is the back of the house, and they reach almost to the ceiling. And this room has a particularly large ceiling, probably a good 10 to 12 feet up. Very spacious room, and... There's these two massive windows that are rectangular, vertical, but at the top, they end where they're curved, like a half circle. Stained glass, uh, much of it caked in filth and shattered panels and things like that. But you all, well, actually, everybody give me a DR12 presence test. 21 for old Rilk. Nope, seven. What did everybody else get? 17 for Drago. Oh, sorry, I was muted. 17 for Dorpad. Okay, so everybody but uh, Grolsk. <laughs> Almost like Groslik. Yeah. I one more. <laughs> Groslik has king. returned. We, we have to keep uh, him alive this time. Everybody but Groslik, uh, you hear or see a shape move in the shadows kind of darting between cabinets or bookshelves clearly trying to stay out of sight um can I rush and try to grab it sure you try to cut this thing off and you're about to try to grab it and when you gets into the light uh I'll let you decide what you do here what you see is a humanoid creature, two legs and two arms. Uh, looks like it may have had clothes, quote unquote, at one point, but now it is this horrible, ropey, fleshy, weird, strange creature. Its skin is kind of ragged and almost jagged in, pl in places. Um, it almost has like tendrils coming off of every inch of its skin. It gives it this writhing, strange appearance. Its main hands aren't really hands so much anymore. They end in large, elongated fingers that look more like claws. Basically, three fingers instead of five. The feet almost appear webbed, as you can't really tell where the foot ends and where the, the toes begin. The toes that you can't really make out of, like, stretched out almost to, like, again, like a claw-like feature. And you can see, kind of off of random parts of the arm, it looks like smaller appendages sticking out at perhaps a finger that has somehow become a, an arm or a small limb. And the, the torso looks like... Imagine if you were wearing a 
a vest or a jacket. That's kind of the shape that you see. But rather than clothing, the weird, rippling, sinewy skin of this creature, it almost looks like it makes uh, an open maw, and the opening of the maw is vertical, kind of from its, uh, its clavicle down to its navel area. So it's like chest, its torso looks like a mouth. Um, and then that opening, that slit of the mouth, kind of continues up through its throat all the way up to its forehead. So it looks like from the forehead down to about its navel, it just has this vertical opening that is a mouth with teeth or claws or barbs or horns. You can't quite really tell that make this thing up. And what's even stranger is this thing is clutching this wicked-looking sword in one hand, and it's clearly trying to avoid you as you try to stop it, Rilk. And this is what you all see oh my God. eventually. Jeez. <laughs> and it... Oh, no. It's, it stops, and it... Uh, it almost seems to kind of recoil from you. What do you do? He's immediately going to stumble back and, like, throw up. <laughs> oh, oh, what the fuck is that? Oh, 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 fail, fail, guys. Yeah, you all see this at this point. Uh, I'll try talking to it. Like, hey there, easy, little guy. Uh, it kind of steps back, and its head sharply snaps in your direction. All right, but keep your distance, all right? We're not going to hurt you if you don't hurt us. It just kind of, it kind of cocks its head as if it's listening to you. All right, we're, what are we looking for? A book? A potion? What, what do we need? Something to cure. Our Henry. friend's... All right, this guy's got a curse on him. Uh, we need something to uncurse him, and uh, we think it's here. You know anything about curses, goblin curses? You hear what sounds like a voice. You feel like it's emanating from this creature's chest mouth, but it also feels like it's in your head. And it all you hear it say in like this raspy voice is cursed blade and it holds up the sword kind of like pointing it at your direction not in necessarily a threatening way uh i look around at the other guys i think the blade's cursed no, we, we, we don't want another curse. We're trying to get rid of the first curse. Uh, you notice it, it's looking... It's looking almost past you, uh, oh. Dorpat, as if it's looking... It's looking like at a random wall here. <laughs> and it keeps looking in that direction as if it's it sees something or... or you know, is maybe trying to avoid something. Oh. I got a bad feeling he, he's trying to avoid that wall. Um, would that be like sort of in the same direction that the skull is looking? Do we have any idea? Now that you think about it, Sean, you do some quick maths and uh, <laughs> quick math. you know, some <laughs> faggering theorem calculations. Yeah. Probably. Hey guys, uh, same direction as the creepy skull. Uh, well, how how do we get past that wall? Uh, it holds the sword up, um, almost like this way. Like it's it's like holding it so you can kind of like look at the sword, like pre not presenting it but showing it to you. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, you hear the voice, or you, you feel the voice again. It says, Must 
kill a sinner. Kill a sinner, huh? Well, I haven't sinned today. I don't know about you guys. I'd like to think I'm generally sin free. <laughs> My God is dead. <laughs> well, maybe we should look around a little bit more. Uh, but I don't turn my back on that thing. Yeah, not a chance. It proceeds to duck behind uh, like an old grandfather clock as if it's hiding from something. Still looking in the direction of the skull. If only there were any sinners around here. Well, uh, can we check the other wing, I guess? Of course. <clears throat> You search that wing. The setup is similar with a long hallway with several doors on either side. Um, down here, this uh, eventually ends in uh, what looks like a, a garden, which has since become overgrown and dead and shriveled. Uh, otherwise, you find many more rooms, most of which are locked or unopenable. Uh, but you don't find anything quite as curious as the creature in the art gallery. And when you come back through, the skull does turn to face you guys when you enter the hall, but then it turns once again to face in the same direction of the art hall. Can I use my power whispers past the gate? Okay, what does that do? Um, ask three questions to a deceased creature. I'm like I'm wondering if the skull counts as a deceased creature, so I'm gonna try. Hey, what do you ask? Um, what? What are you staring at? So you can't. Oh, do you have to roll to cast this spell? Um, good question. I assume. Or is it just? Uh, let's see. Intuitive. I think power. if you're using a power, you have to hit wield power. Oh yeah, because you're the pale one, and you get one random power a day, right? Right. So yeah, you still have to quote unquote cast it. Is that a nineteen or a three? It's a three. It's I'm three. I'm going to reroll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with, a, with a fucking omen. The dice like ended on its edge. Was yeah. <laughs> Try that again. Oh, there you 17. go. Seventeen. Okay. Nineteen. You cast your spell, Sean. How does it look? What does it look like when a pale one casts their random power for the day? Uh, How does it look for Rilk? Uh, Rilk's eyes probably glow, little flutters of energy. His clothes get a little bit of static electricity. Uh, and then his hair gets all, like, fritzy. <laughs> then weird okay. shit happens, I guess. So when this ends, you and you alone all of a sudden can hear dozens, if not hundreds of voices. And it starts off as like a low murmur, but it quickly feels like a cascade of screams, wails, and shouting of kind of ghostly disembodied voices. You hear all these conversations rushing through your head. Uh, and eventually... It all just stops. It's dead silent. It doesn't even seem like you can hear the room you're in. And you then hear or again feel this voice and you can tell it's clearly that of the floating skull. Um, and I'm sorry, what was your question again? Uh, the first one was, is, what are you looking at? The door the door to the night vault of Shekhtar. Uh, does Shekhtar sound familiar? No. Okay. How do we get to the door? Slay a sinner with the cursed blade. Slay a sinner with the cursed blade. Okay. Um... What is that creature in the art gallery? 
a grotesque. All right, a grotesque. I'm going to assume that means sinner. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> It's like the spirit of some young innocent boy too. It just got like transformed. Yeah, sorry, Quasimodo. Uh, so I yeah. mean, you guys could always sacrifice Henry. I mean, I feel like he's just too good of a person for us to sacrifice. Yeah, he's he's like killed a... before his power gets out of control, Sean. I need your help. <laughs> well, we yeah, can, he's we like can a help. We could always point. could always come back with a. a prisoner we could i mean there seems to be plenty of sinners hanging around outside you know we could... that's, that's a good point actually <laughs> Let, let's go grab one of the people we were originally gonna dunk in those pools <laughs> instead come back and kill him with a curse blade yeah uh, i'm down for it you could do that sure okay uh so you head back to craven ford um you know all in all maybe probably like a day of traveling there and back we'll say uh, but you get back, um, I assume you speak with the deacon about this? Yeah. Okay. Giant we need a, we need a sacrifice. <laughs> All right, well, you, you get an audience with the, the, the deacon. She grants you one, you guys meet her in the temple. As usual, she's standing in front of the altar waiting for you guys when you arrive, as, as if she knew exactly when you'd be there. Nice. Queen. Children of the Backlure, you seek my wisdom. Yes. We found an abandoned home with a giant floating skull in it that is staring at a, what it said was a doorway to the Vault of Shektar. The Night Vault of Shektar, I think. She doesn't say anything, she just continues to listen. And then there's also some creature that's called a grotesque with a cursed blade, and it wants us to kill a sinner with the cursed blade to open the Night Vault of Shektar. She continues to stare at you, motionless. Okay. Uh... We need a sacrifice to get into the vault. Are there any any quote unquote sinners that we can use to open the vault to hopefully find something to cure Henry? Child of the Beck Lure, there are always sinners here. Always sinners that need cleansing. Okay. With your permission, we would like to take one and cleanse them. There's a long silence. You can't tell if she's thinking or appraising you. Either way, it's an uncomfortable 20, 30 <laughs> seconds. Jesus. And finally, she puts her hands up to the, to the, the roof, puts her head back. She says, then let it be the will of the Becklure. They will not be cleansed in the crystal pool. They will be cleansed by the cursed blade. You shall have your sinner, Rilke. Praise be to Becklure. Thank you. Praise to the Becklure. And, um, Basically, what happens is uh, she she organizes for this prisoner to be brought to you guys, and it's a man who looks like he's been fairly roughed up. Uh, he's kind of whimpering and crying, you know, begging to be released. Uh, Captain Graf uh, brings him to you along with the owner of uh, the inn here in town. Um, which is called Old Bartok's Inn. Um, Bartok Mar Marlow is uh, the owner. You guys know he is one of the deacon's strongest supporters. Bit more, bit more uh, fervently religious than many people here. 
and um, he is kind of dragging this guy, and Captain Graf is with him as well. And you see that this man's left hand uh, is bandaged in a dirty, bloody bandage, and you can tell that he no longer has the left hand. It is simply a bloody stump. Ooh. And when they bring him forth, she says, this man, this man has tried to steal from us, steal from Marlowe's Inn. He is a sinner. He should suit your needs, Rilk. Thank you. Yes. And the man is whimpering, like asking, "What's happening? Who are you people? You know, where? What are you gonna do with me?" Uh, but none of the three of them even acknowledge this guy, other than to roughly shove him in your direction. Okay. Well, we should get a move on. Praise be to the Beck Lure. Praise. Face to the back line. And uh, the graft and Marlow depart. And as you guys leave the temple, the deacon simply stands there nearly motionless in front of the altar, with her hands claps, clasped in front of her, staring at you as you guys make the long walk from the altar to the doorway. And when you turn back to, uh, to leave... She's still standing there staring at you guys as the doors close behind you. Hey. I will need... Uh, well, it'll be another day because uh, eventually night falls. You guys won't be able to leave as the forest path is swallowed up once again. Uh, but you guys can lock this guy up in the like the cells of the barracks or something like that. There's probably a small jail. However, you know what that means. <laughs> it's time for another D4. Time for another misery. Oh dear. Oh boy. <clears throat> is, is it me? All right. Oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah. always you. It's right, always here, you, baby. Here it comes, buddy. Okay. Oh, three. Your suffering in this doomed world continues for another day. And then please roll me a d20 as you journey back. Let's see what kind of crazy, creepy shit you come up to this time. All right, guys, this time I'm not going to say anything to anyone, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I promise. 19. Hey. Uh... Everybody finds candy. <laughs> okay. The candy is cursed. <laughs> this time, you come across another procession of people. This one, though, is not a religious procession of flagellants and maniacs, but instead, a funeral procession. It seems villagers from a nearby village, filthy, toothless, poor, dirty, wearing very disheveled clothes, are carrying a very large coffin, easily twice the size of a typical human being. Looks like it's taking about 18 to 20 men to carry this thing. Uh, there's a priest at the front of the procession swinging a thing of incense on a chain muttering a small chant or prayer and you see when it comes to the point where everyone responds to whatever he's saying they respond and then they slap the side of the coffin with one of their free hands they basically got the coffin up on their shoulder and then they slap the side of the coffin with the opposite hand it makes a strange almost marching droning sound as they walk past you guys. They all give you awkward stares. Some of them seem quite vindictive or perhaps even hate-filled. 
others very solemn and almost despair filled as they pass you guys uh, I, I don't make eye contact <laughs> I, I look down I yeah. <laughs> after, after. I don't even I don't e- I don't even pick my nose even though I really want to because I'm nervous all right yeah after yesterday's beating I'm not looking for anything more yeah yeah looking yeah, away that's how you end up in the coffin <laughs> yeah I don't want to be there sinner <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, you continue back to the manor the whole time. The man asking where you're taking him, begging to let him go, telling you that he won't ever come back to your village. He's sorry for stealing. He'll never do it again. He really won't, bro. (laughs) He's definitely not going to steal again. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, eventually I assume you take him back to the art room. I guess, yeah. You hear the scuttling, and then you can see the grotesque peeking out from behind a stack of crates. Well, okay. I guess, you know. Please give me the cursed blade. I don't even know his name, so I'm not going to say anything. I think he said it was Jim. Jim. Jim, can I have your cursed blade? <laughs> it looks at you. You're guessing inquisitively, but it does not come out from behind the crates. Gonna... We have a sinner. Yeah, we, we have a sinner we need to kill. Its head perks up when you say that. Oh, way to go, Eric. That was nice and smart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get ready to do GTA uh, heist here. Yeah. <laughs> Just yelling at my controller. <laughs> Just fucking do it. Get ready. Uh. Um. What do you do? Um. Just come on. Give Give me the cursed blade so I can. I can see the door. Uh, it begins to creep out, very cautiously approaching you guys. The man begins to freak out when he sees this thing obviously. What what the hell is that thing? Don't let it near me. Shh. He's trying to struggle. It'll be okay. You're gonna be okay. Uh, who's holding him? How do you guys have him restrained? We have him tied up with my chains. Heavy chains, yeah. Damn. Okay. Uh, who's, who's guarding him? Well, I'm I'm talking to the creature, so. Okay. I mean, I could say I'm. Cool. Uh, I got the. I'll say I have the crossbow out, and I'm. Uh, I got it at his back. Right, well, who? Uh, let me. Uh, I'll hold the chains. Who's holding the chain? Yes, give oh, me yeah. a. They're my. They're my chains. My I'm chains are my responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I will carry this burden. Uh, please roll me a dr12 strength test as he's trying to get away from this thing. Alright guys, I'm not very strong, so... Nope! You are not! <laughs> that is a one! <laughs> that is a one, and I do not have any omens left. I not have, a, one, so I have an omen, so please re-roll. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, we let we let players use each other's uh, omens if they want, Tyler. Oh, <laughs> are you kidding me? From a not natural me, one to a natural one critical wow. fumble. Uh, not only does the chain snap, no, my chain. One of your fingers breaks as it gets caught in between the links, Ooh. and this guy runs and he just yanks you off your feet and goes running out the door down the hall, screaming. Chase uh, when this happens, the creature gets spooked and scuttles behind the piano and underneath it, hiding. Can I, can I try to snatch the blade from it? <laughs> sure. Give me a D. Hold on. Where's the creature? Creature stats. I need a DR 16 uh, strength or agility, your choice. Uh, it's very hard to bring yourself anywhere near this thing, let alone, let alone like trying to quote unquote attack it or interact with it. Okay, we'll go with strength. 18. Wow. 
you your hand brushes up against this thing's disgusting crawling flesh but you are able to wrench the blade from its hand uh however i need you to make a dr12 presence test <laughs> oh no <laughs> i'm going to i'm going to boom in that reroll okay okay <laughs> all right uh so when you make contact with this thing your head is filled with all sorts of chaotic images screaming and just utter madness this this swirling cacophony of insanity kind of fills you for a moment and your presence is permanently reduced by one oh But you've got the cursed blade. Well, uh, so we need to that. that guy. <laughs> yeah. So while that's happening, what are the other member? What are the other Cretans doing? I'll go running after the guy and try and shoot him in the leg. Okay. Give me a range test, please. Dr. Twelve. All right. All right. All right. So that's agility uh, for yes. range. Yes. Thirteen. Got it. All right. Nice. You hit him. Uh, please roll damage. Uh, and it does. I think it does. I hope it'll kill him. It does one, one d eight. Oh damn! That's a strong bow. Yeah, it is. We have to go back and get another sacrifice. Ooh, uh, I don't think he's that evil, guys. <laughs> All right. Six damage. Uh, I did try. I mean, if it helps at all, I was only shooting for his legs. So. I mean, you do hit his leg, uh, but it goes out the front of his kneecap. He screams in pain and crashes to the floor. And there is a massive pool of blood quickly, quickly uh, pooling around his destroyed, destroyed leg. Oh, my God. I, I, I grab him by the good leg and I start bringing him back. I'm like, all right, guys, we got to hurry. <laughs> Oh I run over and I just stab him in the chest <laughs> with the cursed voice. Oh my god! Okay, um, so <laughs> you strike this guy, and uh, you see he he screams again in pain, but as you stab him, Rilk, you can tell that it is not just a scream of pain, but one of absolute uh, terror and frightenedness. Um, I need you to roll me. Oh, I don't know if I have it in here. Let me grab my notes. Oh, which book is it in? One moment, please. If my PDFs were open, that is. There we go. Okay. Please roll me a d20. Oh no. Eight. Okay. Slowly but surely, this man begins to transform uh, into what appears to be a giant cockroach. However, about halfway through this transformation, uh, a la the fly, part man, part bug. Um, <laughs> he dies before the transformation finishes. Oh. You feel as though this is the curse the blade put upon him, but he died before it fully uh, took over. As he dies, there is a shimmer that comes across the room, kind of just out of thin air in the center of the room. And you see that almost as if waking from a dream, a single door kind of materializes out of nothing. And it appears to be a solid door now standing in the middle of the room. When it finishes materializing, you look back down at the man and he has become a withered, dried out husk where he was not that 
several seconds ago. Uh, after about a minute, the weight of the chains crushes what's left of him, and he just kind of falls apart into dust. Okay. At this point, the grotesque uh, comes running at you, Rilk, trying to take the blade back. It is clearly not happy that you took its weapon. Uh, it is going to be a d4 damage attack at dr16. Jeez. Again, even getting near this thing makes you kind of recoil. Nope, I definitely feel that. Okay. But I take some damage. damage. Alright. I need you to make another dr12 presence test or lose another point no. of presence. <laughs> no! <laughs> I was doing so good with presence. Okay, you guys can all act. This thing tries to grab the blade back. You can tell it's having some sort of effect on Rilk. Not a physical effect, but a mental effect. Um, do I need to reload in this game? What are you using? Crossbow. Uh, yeah, the crossbow would take a turn to reload. Uh, I'm doing that. Okay. Anybody else? I'm gonna try and Oops. shoot it with my bow. Okay, it'll be, uh, DR-18 because he's in combat right now. DR-18? If, if you don't care about hitting Sean, then it'll be DR-16. But if you miss, there's a chance you'll hit him. Yeah, when you draw your bow to shoot at this thing, mm -hmm. you you have this feeling of repulsion uh, that you don't even want to like look at this thing, let alone try to interact with it in any way. It's a it's, it has a special ability called Horrific Visage. So attacks and defense against it are DR sixteen base. That's gonna be rough. Hey man, just roll an eighteen plus. You'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do I do you want me to just roll an agility, or do you want me to roll attack? Because it doesn't. It well, normally uses present. You can, you can choose the to put the dr at eighteen. Yeah, uh, but it, it'll use my presence, won't it? Yeah, yeah, I'll probably use presence. Yeah, just make an agility test um, instead. Are you are you trying to avoid hitting Sean? Oh, it doesn't matter. Yes. You don't hit him. Okay, you strike with an eighteen. Roll damage. It has no armor. Just a gross, ropey, sinewy body of tentacles. <laughs> All right, you hit this thing in the shoulder. This arrow comes screeching right past you, Sean. Strikes this thing in the shoulder, and it screeches in pain. This weird voice emanating from its chest, face, mouth, uh, right in your face. And it begins to... Uh, well, it's trying to flee, but anyone else who hasn't acted yet may do so. Oh, yeah. Um, Drackle kind of cautiously run forward sideways and swing his uh, sword. Okay, DR-16. And no armor, you said? No armor. Oh, buddy. That's a no. <laughs> Rilk will try to hit it with the Necro Whip. Oh! Oh, yeah. Sick. Do it. Alright, DR16. Is it undead? No. Okay, so then it just takes the regular D4 damage. Oh, nice. Alright. Sean, how do you kill the Grotesque with the Necro Whip? <laughs> just, you know... Indiana Jones wrap the whip around its neck and then just pull back like clotheslines and whatever might amount <laughs> might be its neck mouth snap snaps okay with an audible crack it basically clotheslines its its head staying where it is but the rest of its body trying to move forward its feet go flying up in the air and it crashes down on its back with the whip wrapped around its neck it is very clearly dead uh, does anyone want this cursed blade? And he's just gonna drop it on the ground. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm encumbered, otherwise I'd take it. 
<laughs> oh, uh, um, the voices in Drackle's head start uh, really gathering some steam, so he feels that's a sign to take the sword. <laughs> Go for it, King. <laughs> okay. So that one, might... one cursed blade, please. One cursed blade. It is a uh, sh- the damage on this thing. <laughs> It does uh, D6, so it's like a, I think, a short sword. And okay. anyone who is struck by it must take a DR14 presence test or become cursed. Uh, you'll just okay. have to. So I'll make an item here for you. Or you know, take a short sword and then I'll modify it for you. I Yeah, I have it modified at my thing, but I don't know where to put the that modifier you said. In the, the special curse. category, you can type it in. Okay. I had one 15-foot chain. What are my two lengths now? Uh, oh, it's probably like 13 and 2. Oh. Uh, yeah, it broke off pretty, pretty close. Because mo- most of it was used to, to wrap him up, you know? Uh, what's the test for the curse? DR-14 presence. DR-14. Or be cursed. Cool. A cursed blade it is. This stings. <laughs> Congratulations, we have a cursed blade. <laughs> nice. And and now there is a doorway just sitting in the middle of the <laughs> Yep. <laughs> There's a door. Uh I mean it's I ready guess to go. Yeah, let's, right. let's go in. Alright. <clears throat> you enter the door when you open it. Uh, to your surprise, you're not looking through an open door frame, but it looks like you are looking into an actual room that is clearly not on the other side of this door. Uh, the room that you enter appears to be a stone room. It feels as though you might be underground or in a cavern or a catacomb of some sort. It, it's stone, it, like a like a constructed not not uh, natural so there's you see actual brickwork i should say um so very much has a dungeon feel the room that you enter is fairly simple square shaped barren room not very large uh there is a single door i'm sorry there's two doors leading out of here uh one on the left hand wall and one across from the door that you have opened and in this room there appears to be paint covering some of the walls, appears to be splattered here and there. There is a body of a man hanging from the ceiling by a hempen rope around his neck. Uh And you can see that the man does not appear to be dead. He is still twitching and writhing, and he is chewing at the rope. Uh, I mean, go help him. Yeah. Is there like a chair or stool nearby? Like it looks like he did it to himself. There is not. I'm just gonna go grab him by like the legs and try to push him up so he's not actually dying. Okay. He continues to try to chew the rope. Someone cut him down. Is the rope connected to a system of like? like a Rube Goldberg of a trap? (laughs) No. The rope just appears to disappear into the darkness. You realize when you look up, you don't see a ceiling. Whoa. It's just shadow. Uh Uh-oh. That's not great. Weird thing, but... You know, I've already lost two presents this session. Not trying to look at you know, unending shadows and loose more. I'll look at the. Uh, can I look at the unending shadows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's very, it's very dark. It's very dark and black. It's dark in there. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, at this point, the door has closed behind you guys. Oh, oh fuck! Oh, <laughs> but it's still there. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't slam, it just 
closes like a, a regular door that, you know, just would close on its own. You know, it's not meant to stay open by itself. Uh, can we, like, try to help cut him down or cut the rope? Well, you're, you're holding the guy. What is everybody? everybody else? I mean, Kyle's staring at the endless darkness, <laughs> so, you know, Eric's concerned about the door. Um, and this guy's still chewing at the rope. All right, at this point, um, I don't know why I said weaker. Oh, because I have his token selected, that's why. I guess we don't need him because he's dead. Uh, the man seems to have chewed through the rope at this point, Sean, and you can feel that his uh, his weight gets a lot heavier now that he's not being held up by the rope. Mm -hmm. You can tell that it's, uh, it's no longer strangling him. Great, yeah, I'll put him down. He, uh, he kind of coughs quickly trying to get the rope off from around his neck and uh, and then he lunges at you and tries to strangle you with it <laughs> yep. Again. please give um, me that tracks <laughs> give me a DR12 uh, strength test please alright you all watch as the man gets the rope around Rilk's neck the noose I should say and gets behind him and pulls it taut and starts to strangle him Uh, yeah, yeah the Draco would leap into action with the <laughs> cursed blade. <laughs> awesome, do it. Yes. All right, he's only DR twelve. He doesn't have any armor. I got him right where I want him, boys. <laughs> no. Oh man. Oh, by one. Do you have any more omens? I sure don't. You whiff. You whiff. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Anyone else? It's very heavy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I shoot him. I yeah. Are there penalties for firing into combat? Yeah, it'll make it DR fourteen if you. It, all right. I missed. I hit. mean, I'll I'll try it. Is there is there any negative? Can you hit someone or no? Yeah. So it's normally DR twelve to hit this guy, but it'll be DR fourteen if you want to not hit. Uh, oh yeah. Sean. Well, fuck. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here I go. Agility test. Here we go. Uh, a two. <laughs> I would okay. like to break out. All right. Uh, well, hold on, because your 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 turn, Sean was was fighting with the guy this round. Oh, okay. Um. So that's that's the end. So Sean, he's strangling you. Okay. You're going to take two points of damage. That is not mitigated by armor, obviously. Okay. And it is now your guy's turn. The man seems content to uh, strangle Rilk to death. Uh, both of your shots miss, uh, but because you took the penalty, you do not hit Rilk, uh, which would have been hilarious. Um, so you guys may do whatever you wish to do here. Go swing again. I'd like to break out. Okay, yeah, go. go uh, Kyle, go ahead. You said it first. Okay. Here we go. No. Okay. Uh, I'll. Yeah, no. That's All right. Strength so heavy. Test if you want to break out here, Sean. 20. All right. Uh, you managed to get your hand underneath the noose and get it off past your chin and over your head, and you are free. And I'll just move away from him. All right. Firing squad. <laughs> I'm going to reload right. on this All turn. Right. Okay. I'm going to shoot. You have a clear shot. Oh, still I still missed. missed. <laughs> I know. I, I yell out, I'm sorry, I've never really used one of these before. <laughs> okay, the man attempts to uh, strangle Kyle, who's the closest person. Give me an opposed DR12 strength, or just a DR12 strength test. Okay. Fuck me. Oh, boy. Nope. That's a no. Oof. All right. The rope is now around your neck. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys may act this round. I'm gonna hit him with the necro whip. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> no. All right. Oh, oh my god. god. Damn it. We're, we're gonna re-roll that. Natural okay, one. Good. I love okay, it. Good. Yeah, I was gonna say I was about to give you my omen if you didn't have one. <laughs> okay. Thirteen. We hit for two damage. Okay, you strike then, him, but he's still strangling him. He needs Whoa. to uh, take a test. What does he take? 
that's what I'm trying to find out. Description. Uh, DR10 toughness test or turn into undead. All right. You strike this man. You see his strength begins to wane. His flesh begins to sag. It seems like he's aging at a rapid rate. His clothes grow overgrown on him as if they no longer fit properly. They're very loose fitting. And uh, you can feel the tautness of the noose around your neck, uh, Kyle. Drackle. It uh, begins to slacken. And the guy clearly just does not have the strength to, to fight against you. And this continues to the point where he basically looks like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> wow. Very cool. Way to go. Uh, I can fire? Yeah, yeah, it's an oh, open right. shot now. The guy is standing there kind of looking at himself in disbelief. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try and plant it between his Crypt Keeper eyes here. So a 12? <laughs> well, yeah, that'll Drek. do it. 16, there you go. Big old yes. D8 damage coming his way. Jackal dodges out of the way. Seven. Big Oof. seven. Right between the eyes, the man, well, the undead man, drops to the ground and is now dead dead. And as he drops, the noose slips out of his hand and like a, like a, Asian samurai movie, it slowly flutters to the ground. <laughs> Man, fuck this house. That was dramatic. Uh, I'm going to reload my crossbow. <laughs> we got to stop trying to save people. Yeah, no, we're just going to kill everyone we meet, right? <laughs> oh, oh my god, this fucking game. That make more sense. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Drackle? I uh, really appreciate the, the help there. Ugh. Yeah, he must have had, like, a potion or something because he dropped it in front of my pants. And that's I think why... I, saw that. I think I saw that, too. That makes sense. That's why it's wet. That's why. <laughs> you... Yeah, okay. That's why. That's right. You only have one HP. Yeah, he would have... Yep. Choked, he would have oh, choked oh, the shit oh out of you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yep. You actually almost died. D4 yep. damage is a fucking death sentence around here. <laughs> Uh, where's the where's the D two unarmed guards? That's what I want to fight. <laughs> That's kind of why I took on the cursed blade because I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, makes sense now. Enjoy I'm already, you can. I'm already walking on the edge. Okay, well, you have a dead man that was hanging and chewing on his own noose, laying in the room. There's paint splattered on the walls, and two doors leading out of this room. Well, three doors, but two other doors leading out of this room. Um. Why don't you guys discuss that for a second? I need to use the facilities real quick. Yeah, I do too. Nice. All right. So, paint splattered on the walls. I wonder if it has, you know, like, just makes any symbols or if there's any fucking reason. It's maybe it's like a bunch of words, like "Don't go here." Maybe we could always just go on one of the other two doors, just wing it. Yeah. Yeah. See if there's a door closest to like. Any sort of symbols? Yeah, or like examine the um, stuff, the paint on the walls. Is it really just random paint? Maybe it's blood. Who knows? Mm -hmm. No color is it? Yeah. Come back. Nice. Okay, what's it gonna be? Um. Can we look at the paint splotches on the walls? Anything special about them? Like what uh, it's, color is it? It's definitely blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was easy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, are they, like, drawn in symbols, or it just looks like some guy got his arteries slashed and... Uh, it, looks from it, looks like it's, it looks like it's splashed. You're not sure if it's arterial spray or, uh, you know... Blood splatter analysis hasn't been invented yet, so... That's why we have to do it. We'll put it to work. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll just fucking choose a door, boys. Left or right? Right or left? A or B? All right. Right it is, I guess. Okay, cool. Uh, the door to the right 
opens into another room similar to this one uh, as far as that it's a stone room. Not that there's a hanging guy with blood on the walls. <laughs> Immediately attacked. <laughs> Fuck that guy. So, uh, this room has a um, there's a large mirror on one wall that appears to have been smashed. The shards of the mirror lay on the floor underneath it. In here, you find a woman. A woman who... Um, uh, Rilk, you can instantly tell, is another pale one, like yourself. She is rather tall and lanky, uh, but um, she has the pale skin like you, and just kind of that otherworldly blank stare. And... Uh, you can see there's a bookshelf to uh to one uh, on one wall, and there's a small table and chair here, and there's uh, a bed as well, and uh, she's currently uh, sitting at the table reading a book, and when you open the door, she quickly slams the book and stands up as if startled. What do we do, guys? There's a person in here. Last time we ran into people. Yeah, we, we might want to just kill them right now. <laughs> First blade, it is. She, 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 she says. Uh, she, as I said, she's she's startled. She says, "Can I help you?" You're not going to try to kill us, are you? Why would I do that? Yeah, okay. That's really hard to explain. Uh, what are you doing in here? I'm reading. What are you doing in here? Following doors. From uh, a... You got any uh, uh, goblin uncurses? Or cures for a goblin curse. That's what it is, right? Yes, that is what we're looking for. That's what that's what we're here for, basically. You see, she uh, she quickly rushes over to the bookshelf. She kind of puts her body in front of the bookshelf as though she is protecting it, and she her demeanor turns a little bit more confrontational, and she says, "You've come to take my scrolls, haven't you?" Uh, All right, Eric, I think you're right. You can't, you can't have them. They're mine. Uh, Drackle's eyes immediately light up. Um, unfortunately, he has a feat in which if he knows there's scrolls around, there's a 50-50 chance he'll destroy them because they're blasphemous. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So, high or low? Uh, we're going to go high. Oh, yeah. Okay, you do not feel the urge to destroy the scrolls that she speaks of. Okay. Which you're yeah. assuming are on the shelf that she's standing in front of. Yeah. Uh, What if we, like, traded you something for, for one of them? No, they're my scrolls. Oh, uh, well, be reasonable. Can any of them cure the goblin curse? You be reasonable. They're my scrolls. You can't is have there... them. Well, is there another way we can cure the goblin curse? She looks at you for a moment and she says, maybe. Okay, do you do you know it? Otherwise, you know, <laughs> things might get ugly around here, okay? <laughs> Listen, you're no Henry, so we got to save Henry, all right? <laughs> um, she, uh... <laughs> <laughs> No one's going to have any scrolls in a few days, all right? <laughs> we're, we're just going she, straight murder hobo. <laughs> she, uh, she looks at you cautiously when, uh, when you say that. And she says, I don't like that tone. Um, and she is going to 
use her once a day power <laughs> called eyelids blinds the mind oh boy d5 creatures fall asleep for one hour unless they succeed on a dr14 test um so we'll just divide this by two i guess for a d5 um so well, she has to up? she has to pass the test first oh yeah that's right uh what do i do powers hi kitty wheel the power Boom. Boom. Not even hard. <laughs> Two of you. One of them will clearly be uh, Tyler's character because he's mouthing off at her. <laughs> and the other one, we will randomly roll uh, a D3 here. So one, two, Sean, three, four, Eric, five, six. Uh, Damn. Man. Okay. So Eric and Tyler, I need a DR14 presence test before you fall asleep. Oh, Ooh. I had a 16. No, six. All right. You see uh, Groslick, as his name has now become. <laughs> uh, his, his eyes get very heavy, and uh, he literally just like like an, like someone who's got narcolepsy just falls to the ground to sleep. Does he do a honk shoe? <laughs> like the old tiny cartoons? <laughs> She looks a little confused and probably disappointed that it didn't affect the review. <laughs> All right. I, I immediately well, attack, right? <laughs> You're done here. Wow. Come into this woman's home and just murder her. Okay. Well. I tried to be nice to the last person and they fucking strangled me. All right. Me. Go. Get, do, do what you're going to do. What's her Filthy. DR? 12. All right. Good. Filthy murderer. Ooh, there okay. you go. There what you are you go. using? The necro whip. Okay. Uh, she's dead. <laughs> Jesus. God. <laughs> she have like one HP? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Amazing. She's dead. Level so one just, librarian. You've, yeah. killed, you've killed Seldam, the pale one. All right. Let's go look for these fucking scrolls. You may now loot her two scrolls that she yeah. had. We loot. All right, uh, roll me. Hey, uh... she wanted to do this the hard way. All right. <laughs> roll, yeah. Roll me two d six, please. <laughs> no sympathy. Oh, oh try to try to try right, to traitor. Roll, roll me two d ten. Sixty five, and then two d ten. Yep. Okay, so we have a scroll of foul psychopomp. Oh. What I Summon skeletons or zombies. What? And the other one is nine violent signs on not the storm. That is the one that shoots the lightning bolts. Oh, very cool. Well, I'm bad at presents now, so I'll hand these over to everyone yeah. else. They're unclean scrolls, so feel free to take those and put them on your character sheets if you so choose. Yeah, uh, I'll wake up uh, Eric's character. I mean, I, I can use them, or I know how to use them. I just I don't have any more room. I can. Okay. Okay. Um, so we killed her, and we didn't find a cure to the... <laughs> what nope. Um, can I look... Can I read the book she was reading? Yeah, what yeah, about all a... these books here? Maybe there's something in one of these books. Sure. Give me a... Uh... Let's see. Is there a cure here? Maybe. <laughs> high or low, Tyler? Uh, we're going to go with high. 69. Noise. Noise. You indeed find a book that has legends of a cure for the Look, goblin curse. It, it was right here. It wasn't even a ding-dang scroll. She could have gave it to us. Instead, she you would, murder her. If she well, <laughs> she was. You know what? She was being a, a stickler for uh, she, words. She, she put you asleep, and you murdered her. Well, <laughs> tough time. All right, for look, tough measures. <laughs> yeah, look what I look. Check this out here. This here says cure for goblin curses. I'm pretty sure that says kill a pale one, and we just did that, so it's good, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Henry is excited. I actually Yay. don't know if I know how to read. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, why not? Yeah. Okay. All right, you have potential cure for the for the goblin curse. Maybe. Do we want to check out the other the other doorway? Or just uh, there's just going to be something that's going to strangle us. Yeah, we good. To, we just want to leave. I mean, unless there's another cool cursed weapon somewhere, we might just want to get out of here. We've we've done enough damage here. I, I leave it are to you, the group. Are you, yes. are you, are you guys yeah. gonna wake up Grosslick? Oh yeah, I already said I, I already said I wake him up. Oh okay, okay. Yeah. Shake him away. <laughs> Shake right. and bake. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys wish to leave? I, I vote for leaving. Let's. I mean, just let's just open the door, see what's in there. It's not bad. We just close it and leave. All right. All right. Yeah. You'd first ask questions later. Exactly. We're learning. All right. I, yeah, I'll just open the door. Whip ready. So you oh, open the door. Uh, in here, another stone room. You see that there is a bonfire in the middle of the floor that has been built. It is currently lit, filling the room with uh, a warmth, but also a bit of smoke. Um, although, strangely... The, uh, the smoke doesn't seem to be filling the room as you would imagine it would if it was truly a sealed room, but still the, the smell of the smoke is in the air. And uh, you see quite a peculiar sight. You see five goblins that are all arguing and fighting each other, and it appears they're fighting over a... What the heck is it called in this game? An arquebus, which is basically a black powder rifle. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you want to... How, how are all these people in this house? All right. All right, let's just get to killing again. Should I, should I just well, hold start on. the music now? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> guys. I, 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 like, if, how many goblins are there? Sorry. Five. Well, I got, I got one of those scrolls on me. Also, here's what goblins look like in this game. <laughs> oh my god, they yeah. look like goblin sharks. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could I could summon some backup. Yeah, so could I. We could double team this shit. <laughs> I feel like we can kill five goblins really easy. Yep. Well, yep. 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 We probably so don't, don't want... burn... <clears throat> Alright, alright. You you know better than me, maybe, but I'm just No, saying... I want I want to do what you want I mean, to do. You you guys live your lives. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Let's both do it. Let's cycle pop like shit out ten, of this place. Ten skeletons to my back. So, well, let me. I just, okay. I just really want to use it. It's yes. kind of burning a hole in my pocket. There's yeah. another one in the other room. I can take that one. So let me just use it. All right. Yeah. Go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah. I want to. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's a presence right. test. Roll initiative. Round one. And we okay. will rank this music. <laughs> we will end the night. The yes. heroes have the initiative for once in this game. <laughs> once in our uh, goddamn lives. Yeah, do what do what you're gonna do. The goblins don't seem to notice you've opened the door and are staring at them like, what the fuck is going on in here? Okay. Oh man, this is about to turn into an episode of Goblin Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've just got the tokens out so I keep track of their health individually. Alright, so yeah, you go, go first, off, Tyler. All right, how do I do the spell? Sorry, I have to roll some new. Um, on the powers tab, do you have like the scroll there? Uh, it's just. I'm sorry. Let me look in the powers tab. I do. Yeah, just hit wield a power, and it should just roll it. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I think got it's it. A presence test. Here we go. Oh, natural one. Oh no. What oh, happens? Boy. Did I blow up? You? Oh my god, what's going on? Yeah, okay, so first of all, if you fail to cast a spell, you take damage. Uh -huh. So you take two damage and become <laughs> dizzy for an hour. You can't use any more powers during that time. And you've rolled a critical failure, which means you roll on the arcane catastrophes table. And you've gotten... You've read it wrong, you illiterate fool. A oh, caster who rolls it. the same result twice explodes in screaming black fire in which the faces of the dead are seen. D6 damage each round. Water only feeds this fire. What? 
What is going on in this game? I have no idea what that means. You can't put the fire out with water. Yeah, but then why is there a second thing underneath it? Yeah, that's weird. I think that's a description of what it is. A, a gnashing gap tooth mouth spit, splits open on your neck. It spits out your secrets and inner thoughts and can be silenced to sleep only with blood. Uh, let's... Well, the, top, the top one is if he rolls on eight again, <laughs> instead of getting a second gap, gnashing gap tooth mouth, he just explodes into fire. Right, that's almost... pretty cool. Let's see if there's... Okay. Um, effects in italic are things the caster might not immediately realize. Oh, okay. What, what did you roll? An eight? Uh, yeah, it rolled a... I rolled a one, and then it threw out, like, a token. That was, and I, it was, that was for damage, because it did D2 damage. Uh-huh. And then I didn't, I didn't roll anything after that. I think that rolled on its own. And it's an eight. Okay, so yeah, it's um a na yeah a gnashing gap toothed mouth splits open on your neck. It spits out your secrets and inner thoughts, and then see it's doing it weird in here in the rule book. Uh, from the last part of that sentence and can be silenced. That's all in italics. So that last part your character doesn't necessarily know. Mm -hmm. Um. So a gnashing gap tooth mouth splits open on your neck and it begins to spit out your secrets and inner thoughts. Oh my god. Um, it's probably oh, saying something like, boogers are delicious. <laughs> I must pick my nose. Okay, well that oh. could have been worse. You could have like, you know, turned into a skeleton and blown up. Um, yeah, let's see if that happens. Alright, Kyle, good luck. <clears throat> Go for it. Hey. Ooh. Just barely. Yeah. I remember goblins are DR twelve fourteen. Well, he's wielding well, so a power. Th this is just the oh, okay, sum yeah. this is just the summoning. So it's uh, D six to see what I'm. Uh... So three. So that's skeletons. Okay. And then D four is the amount of skeletons I summon. One. No. Great. One skeleton. <laughs> crawls up from the ground uh, I, I look at him kind of uh, sigh and go well fucking go get him it starts to clamor over them over towards them uh, and you can make an attack with it okay it's DR 14 how would, how would I attack with it DR 14 uh, just melee attack does D4 oh. damage. Doesn't have any weapons. No, I mean like, am I what would I be rolling for am I rolling for the skeleton? Yes. Okay, so it's not that I'm not using the cursed blade. Well no, because the skeleton's attacking. Unless you're giving the skeleton the sword. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's no. dangerous to go alone. Take this. No, I shouldn't, because then I don't have anything. No. <laughs> so what would I use? Just, like, straight base strength? Yes. Okay. Oh. Nice. 17. Okay. It does D4 damage, and uh, the goblins have D2 armor. Okay. Nice. Wow. That is, that is a swift goblin punch, or skeleton punch right there. <laughs> <clears throat> Two damage is two damage. Two damage. Okay. The skeleton rushes forward, spooking the shit out of these goblins who are not prepared, <laughs> and it begins to just pummel one of them <laughs> like a bully taking a kid's lunch money. That's great. I'm gonna go attack the one the, the skeleton is beating up. We're gonna, you know, tag team. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, like we're from the Bronx. Dr. Fourteen, because it's uh, it's taking a, a, a back. Yeah. One skeleton just shows two. up and starts beating him up. Oh, there you go. That's a hit. <clears throat> he takes two more damage. Okay. Uh, he's screaming and wishing that his day was not as bad as it's becoming. <laughs> yeah, it's going to get worse. Does anyone else need to act? Yeah, I'm going to shoot one of the ones that's not being uh, engaged. Uh, 
Ah, I still miss. That's a miss. I'm really bad at this. Okay. Um, make a roll for the skeleton, Kyle. The goblin's going to try to try to fight back here, uh, but he doesn't have a, a weapon out. So just uh, DR12. DR12, tough. Two damage. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So that goblin is, is failing. Um, the one you shot at is going to attack you, Eric. So DR14, he pulls out a knife. Comes rushing at you. Actually, no, wait, he's got a short bow. He picks up a short bow near the campfire yeah. and looses an arrow at you. So DR14, D4 damage. D4? Okay. Uh, nothing. You are hit, but your armor soaks the damage. And then one of the goblins is going to come over and try to attack you, Sean. Try to help out his buddy. Yeah. DR14, D4 damage. He's got a knife. And the other two continue to fight over the gun. Zero damage. Okay, you block the attack. The other two are fighting. One of them manages to get the gun from the other. And it is your guy's turn. Go, go, skeleton ranger, go. Um... <laughs> Well, can can uh, Drackle operate separately of the skeleton? Yes. Okay, so Drackle will go. will run at the one that just got the like his hands on the rifle and curse okay. blade him. Okay. And they're twelve, and they got two. They're fourteen. Fourteen and two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, not at all. Big crap. Okay. I'm going to shoot the one that shot me. Nice. You hit. Oh, it devastating. Uh, D4 damage. What do you have, a bow? Dark bow. Okay, they've got D2 armor. All right, he takes a point of damage. Sean? Um, yeah, I'll attack the one I was attacking before. Okay, DR12, because you're double teaming him with the skeleton. Oh, get 20. Where's the, where's the Whoa. sound? I didn't hear, I didn't the, hear sound. the cool sound. Cringe. Oh, um... Well, 11 damage. He only got two health left, so he goes ka-splat. All right. Skeleton gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> high five the skeleton. <laughs> yeah, he high fives you. You guys freeze in midair for a second when you high five. We do the, the predator, like, arm flex. <laughs> you son of a bitch. How you been? <laughs> um, the skeleton can still attack, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, who does he attack? Uh, uh, who, whoever's in front of him, or whoever's next down the line. Well, it's just a swirling melee at this point. Yeah, so he'll just strike out at some, some goblin. Okay. Oh, he hits him. All right. D4 damage, D2 armor. Oh, my God. Another four. This skeleton is jacked. All right. Well, he busts another nose as he punches a goblin in the face. King. And anyone else need to go or is that it? Is this the second round? Yes. Can I uh, shoot something? Sure. All right, I'm going to do that. I'll shoot uh, any other goblin that's left. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, no, I won't. All right. Okay. Uh, skeleton, make a defensive roll against uh, the one that is fighting you. Uh, Sean, you'll have another one attacking you. Okay. And then this other one is going Ooh. to... Let's see. Oh, another net 20. Oh, wow. Make your free attack. Yeah. Uh, the skeleton good. fails his test. All right, takes D4 damage. Okay. Wow, Rilk. One. All right. Skeleton is vaguely hurt. Uh, Ow. There are still, what, one of them? Two of them. Uh, so one of them... Uh, is going to uh, uh, take a shot with his bow. He's going to continue his, his shootout with you, Eric, so he's going to shoot you with his short bow. <laughs> oh, he 
dodge. Or no, he hits. Oh yeah, you're hit. But you take no damage. Ooh, close. Yeah, heavy armor is working out. Okay. Uh, and then finally, to end the round, um, the one with the Archivist at basically point-blank range turns and fires it at... Uh, what the fuck's your character's name, Kyle? Drackle. Drackle. As you come swinging in with the Cursed Blade. Oh, fuck. Uh, so it's DR-14 to dodge. Okay. And then the incoming attack? Uh, it does D10 damage. Ooh. That's a big, big boy. Yeah. Oh, oh but that's a bye bye. Oh, Come 10! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, the gun I... goes off. Yeah. And right through the head. Boom. Drackle is down for the count and dies instantly the Jeez. cursed blade clattering to the ground curse is real uh, and uh yeah let's let's add that to our list of dead dead people big rip Drackle. and i think that's a good place to end for tonight as uh we are at our ending point here Drackle is down and all hell is breaking loose Wow. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Tyler, that's uh, that's a little bit of Merc for you. <laughs> yeah. I I, uh, I reload my crossbow and my neck screams out, uh, my real name is Taprod. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listeners, thank you so much for joining us on the crazy, wacky journey of, uh, of Merc Boar. We will be back again next week. Uh, I believe the frog will be back. And uh, Tyler, are you going to be joining us again, or was this just a one-shot thing? Uh, I think I can make it back in time from the graduation I have, so let's count me in for next All week. Right. Well, if you can, you are more than welcome to join us. If not, we'll have Kyle take over your character. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back for more Merc Boar Madness as the end draws near. Thank you all so much for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode. We sure as hell did. We'll see you on the flip side. Same time, same place. Nighty night. Nighty night.